Charlie Liebrand gave the Rangers pitching staff a present last night. He threw a complete game and became the second Ranger in a row to do that. The bullpen had some much needed relief. Liebrand's win, in fact, makes his road record now 4-0. But he wasn't the only Ranger hero. Jose Canseco did his part. With an eighth inning home run into the upper deck, his first RBI in a week, his eighth home run of the year. Tonight, Canseco and the Rangers go for the deciding game in the series with the Indians. Stadium on the banks of Lake Erie in Northern Ohio. Home Sports Entertainment presents Major League Baseball featuring the Texas Rangers and the Cleveland Indians. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone. Greg Lucas here along with Norm Hitzkiss. This will be the third game of a three-game series between these two. Each team has won a game. The Rangers got complete game pitching, however, in both of the ball games. Last night, it was Charlie Liebrandt getting the victory. But one of the stories last night was another injury. Juan Gonzalez out with a hamstring injury. This on the other leg uh, that was hurt uh, earlier. And he may be out seven to ten days. That was the update uh, again this evening. But Norm Hitzkiss, this is not the only injury problem. The Rangers continue to have injury problems. Last week when we were at home, we projected about June 1st for the Rangers finally to be healthy because Petrali was back and Houston and Ripken were coming back and Ryan's coming back. Now Gonzalez is out. Now Ryan's going to be sometime into June. We just get word that they're worried that Manny Lee has a torn thumb living ligament and he's now week to week. That's not a good status. You kind of wonder if this club's ever going to get healthy, but they've hung in there well given the rash of injuries. And they got Jeff Houston getting closer to coming back so at least there are some bodies tonight's key however may be on the mound because Kenny Rogers starts for the Rangers this is a crucial start for him it is the Rangers must have a stable Kenny Rogers this evening he's been poor the last two starts extremely poor the last two starts the deal was go on the disabled list or start tonight and Kenny, Kenny's going to try it tonight you got a feeling it's a very short leash tonight with a rested bullpen and a day off tomorrow Kevin Kennedy would come get him early if he's not effective the pitching matchup thus will be Kenny Rogers for the Rangers against Jose Mesa for the Indians working on three days rest Texas Rangers baseball on HSE is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade satisfies your thirst and puts back what you need. Gatorade for that deep down body thirst. By your local Sherwin-Williams paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams, a participating sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. And by Southwest Airlines, offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. We're just about set for baseball here. Let's take a look at the batting order for the visiting Texas Rangers going into play tonight. David Hulse in center field, Julio Franco to DH, Jose Canseco in right. Yvonne Rodriguez moves up to the cleanup spot. Rafael Palmero at first base, Dean Palmer at third, Doug Strange at second base, Gary Reedus in left field, and Benji Gill, the shortstop. Defensively for the Indians, they'll have Albert Bell, Thomas Howard, and Glenn Allen Hill in the outfield with Espinosa, Fermin, Bayerga, and Jefferson on the infield. Ortiz catching Mesa. Of course, with Thomas Howard in center field, that means Lofton is not. He's partly injured and partly because of left-handers pitching, and that makes a difference. It makes a difference because that's a drop down defensively. Howard's a good player, but Lofton's a terrific player, and this is the worst defense in the American League with Lofton in the lineup. So Jose Mace is going to have to be good, but he's got the possibilities of being good. With Charles Nagy on the disabled list, this is the ace of the pitching staff for the Indians. Look at that sparkling 3.08 earned run average. Mesa's been in the major leagues for three years after signing with the Toronto Blue Jays when he was 15 years old back in 1981. Spent nine years in the minor leagues before making it up eventually with the Orioles. He was traded for by the Indians last year. A good, hard, low 90s fastball, a split finger, and a slider. 
And Mace is like the little girl with the curl, Greg Lucas. When he's good, he's very, very good. And he was very good against the Rangers in 91 with Baltimore. He had a three-hit complete game victory, 9-2. to two. That still is the best game of his career. He is pitching on three days rest, but you kind of got to figure he's a big, strong guy, and it may not be evident here. The Rangers hope it is. David Hulse will be leading off. Hulse, the center fielder, comes in at 290 with no homers and five runs batted in. They have to play him close. Espinosa at third, Jefferson at first. And here's the first pitch of the ball game, and it's taken for a strike. Mike Bilecki was supposed to be the starter tonight, but he was scratched because he reported a burning feeling in his elbow during his last start. Hulse slaps the ball into the crowd for a foul. It is no balls and two strikes to David Hulse. David four for his last 20. Of course, he uh, slight hand finger injury there for a while, but he's hitting 337 over his last 21 games and solid leadoff job for the Rangers. Fouls it back, and it's still no balls and two strikes. By Leckie, tonight's supposed starter had off-season elbow surgery, and the Indians are being very, very careful. They don't think it's anything major with By Leckie, so he'll be pushed back to the weekend to start, and Mesa volunteered to pitch on three days rest. Hull slaps another one into the crowd. A lot of souvenirs for the crowd, which is always looks smaller than it is in this stadium. The Cleveland Stadium seats almost 75,000, and you can lose 12,000 here. Last night's Dem crowd was 12. Democratic convention would look small in this place. <laughs> no balls and two strikes. And it's the final year for the Indians here. Their new ballpark is under construction. And there is a strike on the outside corner. And Hulse is a victim of a very good first strikeout. Let's take a look at our umpires. The crew has Don Dinkinger behind the plate. John Shulock is at first base. Ed Hickox has been added for this uh, game. And Jim Joyce he is at third. Tim Tashita is also normally with the crew, but he was uh, pulled out or pulled out for personal reasons after last night's game. Franco hitting 267. Of course, he'll get a reaction here. He had some years with the Indians, and not all of them positive in the sense that uh, it wasn't always a total positive feeling about Jose when he was here, although he had some good years. Julio's kind of a strange hitter. You know, we talk about how great a hitter he is at home and he's a terrific Arlington Stadium hitter. Another story on the road that's fouled back and well, is one and one except this place. He, he hits in all of his homes. <laughs> 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 this used to be home and Texas is home. Julio in this park is a, he's about a 350 hitter against the Indians since he's gone to the Rangers. And in this park since 1987, he's a 335 hitter. Of course, he homered. There's a fly foul right side. There may be room for Jefferson. Not quite. Jefferson at first base couldn't get to it as the ball kept going toward the stands. Rangers had just one hit two days ago, and Franco's homer was it. Last night, they got a little bit better with the bats. And... Of course, the only home run was the upper deck shot that you saw in the open to the telecast by Jose Canseco, but Franco was solid. Charlie Liebrandt was really the story uh, last night. He had the Indians under total control. One ball and two strikes, one out here in the first. There's no score. Another foul ball. It is a great day for souvenirs with the first two hitters. Good number of crowd, uh, number of the members of the crowd have filtered into the upper deck. Well, there's a souvenir up there last night from Conseco if somebody could have caught it. <laughs> it's a great clutch hitter. Franco just hitting 267 this year, but has four game winning RBIs. That unofficial statistic that still is kept by some, and that ties for the club lead. One ball and two strikes. Beautiful day in the 70s, I would say, at game time. Long drive center field. Going back Howard to the track. It is up. It is over and out. As Franco continues to hit in Cleveland Stadium. And the Rangers lead it one nothing in the first. Now, are they saying boo or who, Leo? They are booing the front office for trading the guy. 
That's his fifth home run of the year and his second of the year. That hit a net in center field that is actually covering, we understand, a picnic area out there. That's why they have this net. Because the people in the picnic area can't see what's going on in the ballpark. And so they have the well, net to protect them. You mean they just go out there and picnic and <laughs> listen for crowd reaction? I guess. I, it's a little strange deal. Here's Ken Seiko. No wonder the they're building a new park. <laughs> I asked, why is that net out there? And they said, oh, there's a picnic area out there. I said, well, they can't see the game. I don't think there's anybody out there anyway, but uh, supposedly there's a picnic area. And Seiko swings and misses, and the count goes no balls and two strikes. Jose, 291 with eight homers and 39 RBIs. His homer last night was in the upper deck and left, and it was one of those that he was able to watch all the way because he knew it was out of the park. The only question was fair or foul, and it was there, just there to the right of that pole. Yeah, that red section upper deck, 408 feet right down the line is where. That goes upper deck foul behind the plate. You know, back to the Franco pitch from, oh boy, Mesa made a major mistake ahead in the count. He put a fastball literally right down the middle with nothing on it. Jose turned it around quickly for his or Julio did for his fifth. Took something off, got Jose way out in front. That's the second strikeout now. Now let's see. Let's see the picnic. There's the picnic area. Right. It, it is just jammed <laughs> with picnickers. <laughs> well, there they are. They're safe, though. They're covered up, and the, so home the, runs won't hit them on the head. The Indians would like you to know there is immediate seating available in the picnic area this evening. <laughs> Yvonne Rodriguez will be the hitter. <laughs> well, it's a good idea. <laughs> but but shouldn't you have like a mesh fence so they could see the game? I would think you'd at least peepholes or something. That pitch is inside. Well, imagine you're sitting out there in a picnic and a ball lands in the mesh over your head and you say, uh oh, I think the Rangers were up. <laughs> a lot of radio out there. Rodriguez in the cleanup slot hitting 308 overall with a homer and 25 runs batted in. He, and you should know that he's in the cleanup spot and, and he will probably do some of the cleanup hitting for the next week to 10 days because that's how long Gonzalez is going to be out with the hamstring pull. Been slumping a little bit just two for his last 19. But that's hit hard and that's in for a base hit. Rodriguez will take the turn at first as Bell picks it up in the corner. Rodriguez little stumble but that's an automatic double almost and he's in there with an extra base hit. So Yvonne Rodriguez is in scoring position with uh, what is his 10th uh -oh. double. And now, well, I said he stumbled a little bit turning first base. You, now, you notice the Rangers haven't even run out to see it. Kevin Kennedy doesn't want to hear it. I know. He, he says, he's no. Catcher. He's tough. Catchers are tough. Kevin was an old catcher. <laughs> catchers shake that stuff off, right? <laughs> the Rangers are at the point where they literally can't afford many more small to medium size injuries much less a major one. Palmero will be the hitter now with Rodriguez at second base. Palmero's only one for his last 11 and you had an interesting story about he and Mesa. Yeah I went down and asked Rafael before the game what does this guy throw and Rafi seemed sort of hesitant like well he's got a fastball and he's got this and <laughs> I got the stat sheet and and Rafi's 0 for 9 against him. It strikes me Rafi probably, probably doesn't have a good handle on what he throws. <laughs> he hadn't hit any of it yet. <laughs> Rodriguez is at second base. That's a little bloop foul back in the stands. Rodriguez is on with that double to left field as uh, he turned on one. Look at the location again, Greg. I mean, Mesa twice in a row has just buried fastballs and when we say nothing on it we don't mean it wasn't fast but it was just straight and right down the middle Rangers on top one to nothing on the Franco Homer with Rodriguez at second base and the count is no balls and two strikes to Palmero too high one ball and two strikes now this is the situation where Mesa twice already in this game Ahead in the count has made bad pitches on his fastball. And, and this is where a pitcher's got to be able to trust some of his other stuff in this situation. Foul ball into the Indian dugout by Cargrove and crew down there. 
trying to get something going. The Indians are well under 500 and they are going into play. They are 11 games off the lead in the East. Game behind Baltimore going into play this day. 18 and 29. One ball and two strikes, two outs here in the first. Rangers on top, one nothing. Out even two balls and two strikes. Mesa is the Dominican Republic kid. As we told you, signed at 15, at 16 years old. This guy started 13 games at Bradenton. This is a major league, I mean, veteran at 27 years old. Here's the 2-2. Palmero takes it just off the outside corner. Mesa wanted that, didn't get it. He he got one with David Hulse leading off the ball game. That one might have been just a smidgen further out. Standing on deck, another big blaster, Dean Palmer. Mesa at 27 is a 12-year veteran in professional baseball. He's into his third year of Major League credit. That's a foul ball. He's had a lot of elbow problems in his career. He had at least a couple of surgeries. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 88 and 89 he had the elbow operated on. He was DL'd again when? 91 with Baltimore. Elbow troubles. But when right, he's pretty effective. Just turned 27. You mentioned 27 just last weekend. So he's a guy that the Indians are counting on. Here's the full count pitch once again to Palmero. Drive center field deep. Going back for it is Howard to the warning track. Look it up, and it is up over and out of here. Rafael Palmero with a two run homer and the Rangers have exploded in the first three runs and they lead the Indians three to nothing on homers by Franco and a two run homer by Palmero. Jose Mesa and the Indians pitching coach Rick Adair are going to look at this first inning and think how in the world did I make mistakes like this. Here he is with two strikes on a hitter again and look at the location. Oh brother belt high fastball out over the outside corner boom the Rangers have now hit 54 home runs for the year and here's Dean Palmer who has 13 himself that's fouled back into the upper deck Palmer hitting 245 with 13 homers and 31 runs batted in Kevin Kennedy's already said Dino's going to get Friday night off against Clemens fouled the ball off his foot last week and it's real sore Day off tomorrow, day off uh, Friday. <laughs> I got to tell you a story about that, that sore part. Yes. That's foul back. I was sitting on the dugout bench, and apparently you had asked either Dean or you'd ask uh, Danny Wheat about uh -huh. the, the foot. Just a few moments after that, Dean came over to, uh, to Danny, and he said, everybody keeps asking me about my foot. <laughs> my foot's fine. <laughs> and Danny said, yeah, they're coming back to me, and he says, well, it's one of those deals. It got printed somewhere in the paper. He hurt his foot, and that uh, it was injured, and then it goes from the sporting news to Baseball America. To, <laughs> and by the time it's been healed, he says, I'm fine. He says, but you just ask me again about my foot. They're all asking me about my foot. My foot's okay. <laughs> well, it was on Nightline last night. That's probably why uh... <laughs> that pitch bounces up. But he is going to, you're right, he is going to get a, a game off, and Clemens is a good one to get the, the game off. He's actually been hitting pretty well over the last five games. He's hitting 353, but still can use a day off, and Clemens is a good one to get it against. There's a strike three call, so a strange inning for Mesa. He strikes out the side, but in between, he gives up two homers and a double, and the Rangers score three. We go to the bottom of the first, and we'll take a look at the Indians' batting order when we return. Before the uh, Rangers come up, let's take a look at the or the Indians come up. Let's take a look at the Indians' batting order. It'll be uh, Thomas Howard, the center fielder; Felix Fermin, the shortstop; Carlos Bayerga at second; Albert Bell in left; Carlos Martinez, the DH; Reggie Jefferson at first; Glenn Allen Hill in right; Alvaro Espinosa at third; and Junior Ortiz catching. Rangers' uh, defense will have Reedus in left; Hulse in center; Canseco uh, in right; with Palmer, Gill, Strange, Palmero on the infield; Rodriguez catching. Rogers pitching but of course it may not be for defensive purposes but having Gary Reedus in left instead of Conseca or uh, Gonzalez does make a difference. 
Yes, it does. Kenny Rogers goes to the mound tonight desperately seeking a good outing. He lasted only three and two-thirds innings against Oakland, then one and two-thirds against the White Sox, then only a third against California. He has given up 16 earned runs in his last five innings. And tonight in Cleveland, we are trying to solve a mystery. The case of the missing fastball because Kenny has had no crackle at all on a fastball the last few outs. And hopefully the three runs the Rangers got him will relax him and he can go after people like Thomas Howard and Howard goes right after him way back to center field. Pulse at the track will have room and make the catch. Well <laughs> it was Howard going right after Rogers but at least the ball stays in the park and that is one out. Howard has hit two home runs and 13 RBIs. David Hulse can cover some ground and had it tracked down all the way and made an easy play. By now the, Rodriguez is going to go out and talk a little bit with Rogers. By the way, Greg uh, Hulse comes in tonight with a major league streak of 57 consecutive errorless games in center field, dating back to his call up last season. Tell you what, the only thing he doesn't have is a great arm, but there have been a lot of center fielders that have covered a lot of ground that haven't had great arms. And if he can hit 282 90 and cover the ground like he does he's got a chance to be there for a long time. Here's Felix Fermin the shortstop hitting 266 with no homers and 11 RBIs and he takes a strike. Well David's game is just a little bit like Mickey Rivers in that regard isn't it. That's right. Maybe not quite the average but who knows he's only you know it's only his first full season and uh, Mick of course learned how to slap that ball and hit those choppers and and. and grounders through but in other areas you're right he is very similar Maybe he doesn't run quite as well that's fouled back and he'll never be the gozzle head <laughs> he'll be able to be spoke uh, speak and be understood I think a little <laughs> bit more. boy Mick was Mick was fun to be around though and still is by the way Felix Fermin has hit one home run and his career that's fouled back. he uses oh boy that one really ripped into the Indian dugout Fermin <laughs> Kind of grinning like I didn't hurt anybody, did I? For me, of course, was going to be beaten out by shortstop. Mark Lewis never made it. He's still in the organization, but didn't make it. For me, sat a lot. There's a chopper to our the Rangers shortstop, and Gill on the right side uh, makes the play. That's two outs. By the way, you mentioned Mark Lewis. He is dreadfully unhappy at AAA. He issued a statement about a week ago saying he is now playing for every other team in the big leagues because he has no he has no desire to be a part of the Cleveland organization. He is playing just to get attention from everybody else in the major league so they'll deal for him. Nice. That's a nice statement to make. And it probably ain't gonna work much because he didn't produce like they'd expected. Here's Carlos Baerga who had a superb season last year, but he's off to a slower start. He was able to rip that ball past. Gill in the center field for a base hit, so although he's hitting 264, coming in, he leads off here with a base knock. Well, there's something about the appearance of Ranger pitcher that lights up Carlos Baerga's life. He is a career 364 hitter against the Rangers. Just past Benji Gill, and the Rangers now have to face Albert Bell with Baerga at first base. And all Albert is doing is leading the majors in homers and RBIs. Bayerga last season hit 312 with 20 homers and 105 RBIs. You can see how he's falling off. Well, his RBI total isn't bad, 31. He's down on the other numbers, but not Albert Bell. Albert with 15 homers, 42 runs better, and a 302 average. Last Indian to lead the league in categories of homers and RBIs was Larry Doby in 54, which was the last time the Indians won a pennant. Well, this guy's starting to put some major numbers on the board, though. And there's a rip in the left field for a base knock. And I hate to say it, but Kenny is not being too deceptive again in this game. He's given up two solid hits on a long out to center field. And Greg, there's there's really not any crackle on a fastball again. Kenny has a good live arm. That's been Kenny Rogers' strength all of his career. And here's the pitch. Fastball. Kenny's very lucky this ball stays in the park. Bill turned on that ball. If he gets it up, that's uh, two runs. Yeah, he got it down maybe a little bit uh, down toward the handle of the bat. And here's another guy that's got some power. Carlos Martinez doesn't hit with as much power as people think he should for as big as he is. He's 6'5. 
doesn't weigh that much 175 they say but I he got away more than that with your six five he doesn't look that thin but he is uh, he's been a line drive singles hitter but he's been a good hitter and now he's up with a chance to get a hold of one and tie the ball game here in the first 272 this year there are two outs Rangers lead it three to nothing but Rogers in some trouble here blocked nicely by Rodriguez Martinez has that look to him as though he's he's about double jointed in almost every joint he has this sort of loose look to him he has never hit more than five home runs he's done that three times in the major leagues the fact that he's hit three so far this year might indicate that he is learning how to lock the ball a little bit more that was a bad swing on a bad pitch and it's one ball and a strike that was a hitter that just seemed to commit to swinging at a ball wherever it was going to be Martinez was going to swing at it. I think he was looking fastball and he didn't get one <laughs> he he was already committed runner at second by again the top of the screen there bottom of the screen if you see him there and Bell is at first and no throw yet there you are top to bottom Byergen Bell Martinez the hitter Rangers scoring three in the first on a solo homer by Franco and a two run homer by Palmero after double by Rodriguez. Rangers coming into play tonight just one game off the lead in the West. And that's low and it's two balls and a strike. Kenny Rogers has been a truly Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde pitcher. For five starts at the beginning of the year Kenny was about as good as you could ask a pitcher to be and the last three have been very poor. A little bit of pop there yeah. but it was nowhere near the plate and it's now three balls and a strike. Now Kenny and Claude Osteen and Kevin Kennedy met for two hours this weekend talking about what's wrong what should happen. There was discussion of Kenny going on the disabled list. He's been bothered by some stiffness in the shoulder but the decision was made to come out and give him one more start tonight and see how he reacted. A lot of indecision being shown out there. There was also some talk that more of his pitches were going to be called from the bench. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, sitting where Claude is. I would not think he's calling them, at least not at this part. It doesn't look like Kennedy is either, but that might be something they they were considering. Three balls and a strike. Foul ball. That's in the upper deck to the right side. Kennedy and Osteen said basically they were confused by what Rodriguez and Rogers decided the last start. Uh, we watched the game Greg and, and he threw four straight change ups and I, I don't recall Kenny Rogers throwing four straight change ups in the bullpen warming up there <laughs> much less on the mound. They're coming into the bullpen out of the bullpen he didn't throw the change up much. Fastballs and sliders here's the. 3 2 pitch not yet now the runners of course are going to get an extra start here so Martinez who may not hit a lot of home runs ordinarily but does have double power could get a couple of RBIs with a well placed hit. Give me an idea how poor Kenny Rogers has been the last three starts He's earned an average in those three starts twenty five point four oh. Runners go three two slap toward the gap can Seiko racing for it and gets it. Canseco saves Rogers major trouble in the first as two are left but only one batter did not hit the ball right on the button and we played one it's three nothing Rangers. Well if Canseco doesn't make this catch two runs score and another runner is probably at least on third. But Jose is there. He had some trouble with the lights on uh, the game two nights ago, but uh, no lights a problem yet early. And that was a big catch because for Cleveland, they sent uh, five men to the plate and uh, four of them hit the ball right on the butt. Well, and with the runners starting there, it's very conceivable Bell scores from first base if Conseco doesn't catch that ball, even if he keeps it in front of him. Oh, I think so, yeah. Strange is up and he hits a bloop left side coming over for it is Albert Bell foul territory makes the play and Strange continues to slump Doug hitting 273 but now only one for his last 21. Go fish at Long John Silver's where right now you can go for one of three great special meals each for just a dollar ninety nine at Long John Silver's where America goes for fish.
The hitter is going to be Kerry Reedus. Here's one out. Rangers probably going to go to a, a left fielder by committee with Gonzalez out. Kevin Kennedy has shown in the past when Juan missed a handful of games with a problem on the other side with his knee that he uses Butch Davis right there, Desenzo and Reedus trying to keep them all sharp. Reedus hitting just 222 this year, but would be the more experienced and better hitter of the three, particularly throwing him in against some uh, right-handed pitching here and there. Of course, I think Davis you'll see probably mostly against left-handed pitching. Reedus will get to play a little bit against both. Desenzo could go against both, being yeah. a switch hitter, but doesn't offer as much power. Yeah, Desenzo could go against some tough righties. Um, you might even see Desenzo and Reedus or Davis some night when they want to rest Hulse against the left-hand pitcher. Yeah, particularly against a lefty. Reedus hits the ball high in the air over toward right center. Howard moves over. Hill is there. Howard makes the play. They're two out. By the way, the Rangers two home runs in the first inning. They have now homered in 11 games in a row. They have homered in 34 of the 45 games. They're right now on a pace. Hey, yeah, Julio's getting ready. I'm going to launch another one. They're on a pace to hit 185 homers right now. That would be the second highest total in club history. 194 is the club record in 1987. Coming into play tonight, Detroit had 53, so the Rangers with two, at least at this point, have taken the lead in the league. That's fouled back from Benji Gill. A 109 average, no homers and two RBIs. Everybody rooting for Benji to find the stick because he has hit on uh, the minor league levels, but he's had some troubles in the majors. He had a base hit in his last at bat on May 17th, uh, following his recall from Tulsa, but has been hitless in his last 25 at bats. And struck out six of the last eight times up there. And the thing about it is that for the most part, it's the fastball that's getting him. They're yeah. not, uh, they're using the other pitches mainly to set up the fastball, which means they're throwing it past him, and that's, uh, that's something that he's got to work on the bat speed. Two balls and a strike. There he hits that one hard. That's going to get into the glove, however. Now, he hit a line drive his last time up yesterday and was retired, and that one was hit right on the button. Howard making the play, but it's a 1-2-3 inning by Mesa. We'll go to the bottom of the second. The Rangers on defense will see Reggie Jefferson, Glenn Allen Hill, and Alvaro Espinosa. For the car you drive, for the way you drive. Slick 50, high-performance engine form. Reggie Jefferson to lead off in the second for Cleveland. He, the first baseman, hitting 264 with three homers, 11 RBIs. Reggie's been at DH a lot this year. As, uh, Paul Sorrento has done most of the playing at first base with the preponderance of right handed pitching, but Jefferson getting his second start in a row. Boy, and he's cold, too. He is cold. Well, particularly based on what he was at the beginning, you're right. Bounced up to the plate. Jefferson. Hit 361 over his first 15 games and 167 since. And he's 10 for his last 60. That one's a little bit low, and the count goes now to two balls and a strike. In the first inning, Thomas Howard flied to the warning track. Felix Fermin hit a ground ball. That was the only ball not hit hard by Cleveland. Byerga singled, Bell singled. And Martinez lined out. So Kenny Rogers. Uh, got through that first inning without giving up any runs and has a three nothing lead thanks to the homers by the Rangers Franklin Palmero in the Ranger first this game probably is as much important for Rogers confidence as it is for the Rangers uh, because there's a bouncing ball out to strange at second base one out Let's take a look at the American League West standings brought to you by Sherwin Williams coming into play today. It was Chicago by a game over California and Texas with Kansas City. Look at Kansas City. They're just three back now with Seattle four, Oakland and Minnesota. And obviously, all of those teams are all still in the hunt. Or they aren't. If you look at Minnesota's pitching staff these days, unless they get that straightened out pretty quickly, they are going to be out of the hunt very quickly. Well, some teams have already fallen out of the hunt. The reason I point that out over in the uh, National League you've got New York 16 and a half back already and Colorado 17 and a half back. I mean we got double figure teams 
in the National League. In the American League, uh, Baltimore and Cleveland are both double figures. Nobody in the American League West, though, is out of there yet. Hill takes the first pitch for a strike. Glenn Allen Hill hitting 250 with a homer and nine runs batted in. That's assuming, Greg, that the Mets were once in the hunt. That's, that's a good point. Boy, they've really responded to the managerial change, haven't they? Yeah, and by the way, some people might have gotten to see Bobby Valentine wearing the Cincinnati Red Togs mm. last night, coaching third base. And that didn't help either because Davy Johnson's team went down 5 nothing last night. There's a bouncer out again to Strange. Well, now things are looking a lot better here in the second inning for Kenny Rogers. This is arguably Kenny's best inning since the 4th of May when he had a very good start against Toronto. Since then, Kenny's enjoyed almost no good innings. Well, this one has been very good. He's gotten two easy ground balls, and he'll face Espinosa, who well, those, is working at third base. Those three runs were good for Kenny, weren't they? Right. Had to relax him. And, and now the, this second inning has had to relax him because he, whatever he throws, he's able to get him out. Now, Espinosa, after a brief conference here, has been uh, hitting pretty well. He's got a couple of uh, homers and seven RBIs and has st started just seven games, hitting 333. The Indians had hoped by now that a young prospect they have named Jim Tomey would be here and playing third base, and they'd never look back. But that hasn't been the case. Tomey came up, got hurt, never adjusted, and is back in the minors. Well, Tomey was going to be the third baseman. Lewis was going to be the shortstop, but neither one of them made it. That's why, you know, we talk about prospects in all systems. You never know. Well, let's look at the Rangers lineup right now. David Hulse was not a highly regarded prospect, and he's no. a starter in the major leagues. And okay. you just don't know for sure. Exactly right. The guys who work hard, the guys that develop as much as any here's a bouncing ball of course uh, it gets away well as we pointed out when the angels were in two outfielders from grand canyon university taken in the same draft 89 tim salmon highly touted third round pick chad curtis picked in a 45th round and they're starting next to each other in the major leagues and it, you can argue who's the better player right now right some people just develop at different rates some don't develop at all some get hurt and that is all for Espinosa. the first strikeout for Rogers the backdoor breaking ball and an easy second we've played two. the Rangers on top three to nothing. Greg Lucas back on the Norm Hitzkiss. We have a special guest in the booth. And first of all, this is the guy that's responsible for this guy. <laughs> this is Norm's dad. This is my 78-year-old dad, Ed Hitzkiss, who lives close to Cleveland, came down to see me tonight. And my cousin Rita Kaiser's with him. Lean in yeah, here, lean Rita. In there. Lean in over that Sure, one. Rita, lean in this yeah, one. There, there you go. go. Sure, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> They, uh, they also helped take care of Norm when he was out with his, uh, his hip surgery a year ago. Exactly right. And we let him have these tickets for nine bucks. Pretty good seat for nine Not bucks. Bad, no. David Hulse leads off for the Rangers in the third. David, the center fielder, was called out on strikes. Good pitch that Mason. In fact, Mason, the first inning, struck out the side, but gave up all those runs with two homers sandwiched in. Mesa playing uh, with their pitching with just three days rest as Hulse fouls it away. Well, David's average remains very, very good. His tendency to draw walks is disappearing. He never had much of a tendency, but he's only drawn one walk in the last 13 games. Whoops. Well, a lot of that is dictated. A lot of it, you'd have to almost look at every at bat. And if he's not mm -hmm. swinging at bad pitches, there isn't a whole lot you can do about it. If the pitchers are throwing strikes, you, you have to go after them. And. Uh, two balls and a strike and, and also with all hitters it's a fine line between being aggressive and being too tentative I mean it's really tough sometimes you well, I'll see there's a good example that was a good pitch not to swing at but it was a strike well but he did well he didn't offer a pitch that was tough to hit he still got Mesa at a 2 2 and Mesa with a, a control problem most of his career is at times very liable to walk someone that's fouled away. Good job. Good job. That's what the Rangers want Hulse doing. He's now six pitches deep in the count with Mesa leading off an inning. And backed up by a notorious pitcher worker, Julio Franco. If Hulse can work pitchers this way and then go to Franco, 
Rangers can do some damage to a pitcher in an inning. Two balls, two strikes. On the ground toward the hole, but Bayerga has room. Quick flip gets him by a couple steps. That's one out. That's a nice play. Bayerga is an outstanding player. Of course, at the time the trade was made that brought him over here, remember there were some uh, big names Joe Carter, Sandy Alomar. Bayerga is certainly not a classic second baseman. He's played a lot of different positions. The Indians basically have found one they needed to fill and they've got to keep Bayerga's bat in the lineup and he's become not a great second baseman but certainly an acceptable one and when you add in his offense he becomes a premium player. He was actually the key player in that deal from San Diego although he was not the big name. In fact he was the smallest name. A hard shot off the glove of Espinosa. He reaches up in time and fires out Franco at first base. And Franco is hobbling just a little bit as he overruns the bag. Uh oh and and Danny Wheat the trainer headed on to the field and it's plays like that that you worry about Julio because the natural reaction and instinct of a player is when the ball's bobbled I can beat this out so you, you press the gas pedal a little more now here it is he the ball went off the glove of the third baseman Espinosa and he had a chance to beat it. Oh, see there the you snow. heard it. Yeah. You felt it right when he was almost at the bag. And now Danny Wheat is looking him over along with uh, Coach Mickey Hatcher. And you can see he wears the protection on the left knee. See it through the uniform. About three steps in the bag. Watch his mouth go ow. So Franco is very stiff with the right knee, it looks like. Boy, when it rains, it pours for Kevin Kennedy. One night, Gonzalez. The next night, Franco. Boy, you kind of cross your fingers for the plane flight on an off day at this rate. Franco has had problems, as you know, with both knees at one time or another. Last year missed most of the year. And you know it looks like it's the right knee the way he's holding it stiff and not wanting to bend it. That is bad news. Because everybody in this club concedes one thing. The catalyst in that lineup is Franco. We will try to get you as quickly as possible a report from the trainer's room concerning Franco. Help him down the stairs. Wow. He's not putting any weight on the right leg. And so Franco to the dugout. Can Seiko up with two outs and he chops on one hop to the third baseman Espinosa the toss across and it's a unproductive and could be disastrous top of the third for the Rangers. They lead it three nothing Franco to be helped to the clubhouse as the engines come up in the bottom of the inning. A decade of sports 10 years of entertainment HSE. Indians and the Rangers three nothing Rangers bottom of the third but the Rangers have lost Julio Franco Mickey Hatcher trying to explain maybe what he saw down there coaching first Ortiz hitting 206 with no homers and five runs batted in Junior's been a tough out in this series so far three base hits. There's a shot right at Benji Gill who was positioned perfectly and that's one out. Tonight's game is being brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Catch all the action in Sports Day every day only in the Dallas Morning News. This is Cleveland Stadium, the home of the Indians for one more season. Their new park, normally talking about a little bit later on, but their new park is under construction. Doesn't seem to be, at least by visual 
sighting as far along as the Rangers Park, but they say they are a little ahead of schedule and it'll be their home next year. This is the top of the order, Thomas Howard. This will still be the home of the Browns in football. No more Indians after this season. There's a base hit up the middle. Rangers have a chance to win two out of three in this series but may lose more than that because uh, last night Juan Gonzalez running to first base and this is last night he pulled his left hamstring and pulled up right there and he may be out they are guessing at least seven to ten days and then earlier just the last half inning Julio Franco trying to beat out an infield job apparently has hurt his right leg right knee or leg had to be helped to the clubhouse. Fermin, who grounded out in the first inning, is up with one out, runner at first. Hits now for the Indians. They have three. Rodgers gave up two of them in the first inning. Bouncing ball past Palmer, who was off the bag. That is in the corner for an extra base. Going into third base and holding is Thomas Howard. And into second base with a double, Felix Fermin. Ball was hit well, but it also was hit just in the right spot. And the problem you have now is that the table setters for the Indians have set the table. Now comes the two bangers, Bayerga and Bell. And each of them have terrific careers going against the Rangers. As you can see, the ball was just past Palmer, who, because the hitter was Fermin, was in shallow. Had he been deep, as he would with some hitters, of course, uh, he might have had an angle and been able to get to the ball. But he couldn't with Fermin up. And now Bayerga, who singled his first time, is up with runners in scoring position in a Rangers 3 0 lead. Bayerga with 31 runs batted in, second on this team. Takes a breaking ball that's blocked by Rodriguez. Bayerga is one of those guys you were talking about last telecast, Greg. Bayerga will occasionally, he's a switch hitter, he will hit right-handed against right-handers and left-handed against left-handers if he feels he sees the ball better or has an advantage in that situation. He do it against a lot of left-handers that throw uh, screwballs. There's a breaking ball in the corner for a strike, and that makes the count one ball and one strike. He's the only, uh, he and Bell, who is up next, are the only Indians to appear in all the games this year. And I think I'd have them in the lineup myself, based on their records and their RBIs. Ierga now nearly a 370 career hitter against the Rangers. Puerto Rican swings and misses, and out of the glove it pops one ball and two strikes the the Rangers are now repositioning Mickey Hatcher with two strikes on Bayerga moves halts I mean moves halts 10 to 15 feet over toward right center field and moves the right fielder Canseco way over toward the line now this is a part of Mark Sullivan's advanced scouting reports of what Bayerga does when down in the count he tends to become much more of an middle and right side hitter. Foul back to the screen. Yeah, he's very defensive. He, anyone with a good average or most anyone with a good average as he does with a career 293 is going to change his attack with two strikes and that's what the Rangers are positioning the defense for. Everybody has gone five six seven steps to their left in the outfield. They give Bayerga the entire left field line with two strikes on him. One ball and two strikes. Rangers lead 3 0. Howard and Fermin on in scoring position. Foul back off the bat inadvertently. And the count still one ball and two strikes. Point I was about to make about Bayerga last time he was up was that he was the most unknown of all the players in that big trade with uh, uh, San Diego. I mean, it was Sandy Alomar. He was going to come over here and catch. Uh, Chris James, who now is with the Astros, was going to come over. And Joe Carter went the other way. But if Bayerga had not been part of the deal, Cleveland said they wouldn't have made it. And he has shown why that was the case. All-star performer. 300 hitter with power last year. One ball and two strikes. 
Defensive hitting for sure there. That'll fall untouched in the bullpen. Just punching at the ball. By the way, you mentioned Alomar. He's not in the lineup on the disabled list after back surgery to correct a bulging disc. Sorrento, the power hitting first baseman, the regular not in the lineup against the lefty, and Lofton not in the lineup with a bruised thigh. So the Indians lineup tonight also missing a few of the stars. Lofton would normally play against either lefties or righties, but the fact the Rangers have pitched two lefties has kind of worked for them here because they're going to give him a day off. That's who it would be against. Here's the one two chop for the shortstop runner will score from third Benji Gill will make the play across Ooh. just barely Benji, just barely Benji is developing a very bad habit of double clutching with the ball at shortstop he catches now watch him tap the glove watch there and and that is going to cost him a runner soon it almost costs him by Erga who misses beating that ball out by about a quarter of a step. Barga gets the RBI, making it a three to one game. Staying at second base for me and Albert Bell, who singled his first time, is up. Great. Albert, a big player at LSU in college. I mean, this guy's got some great numbers. A homer every 11 and a half at bats this season, and an RBI every four at bats. In three years at LSU, you know, we talked about Pete Incavillo with his 50 homers. 100 homers in his career. Of course, he played more games. Bell at 49 with 332 uh, batting average. 172 runs batted in. He was tremendous college talent. Then was uh, selected in the second round by Cleveland in 87. He's had some ups and downs personally and, and professionally, but he's straightened them out apparently. He's very popular here in Cleveland. You heard the crowd reaction. Big battle with alcohol that he's overcome. Here's the 1 0, and that's. A little bit low. Let's take a look at the Sherwin Williams run batted ins leaders because we're seeing him right here. Albert Bell with 32 or 42. <laughs> Carter, Canseco, Tettleton, and Thomas. No little people on that list, no. are there? These are huge people. Bashers. Two balls and no strikes. Vermeen still at second base with two outs here in the third. The Rangers lead it three to one. Kenny Rogers pitching. Outside corner strike. One thing that is a tradition here with the tribe, as the club is known, John Adams will be here beating the drum. And of course, that character Come was on, uh, that character was part of the movie Major League. There's a fly ball to right field. Canseco has room. Says, "Stay away, David. I got it." He does. That's it. One run on a couple of hits and one left. We played three. The Rangers lead it. Three to one. Please don't do that. Charlie Murphy cooking Johnson Bell Brats. Johnson Bell Brats. Folks can't resist the simply great taste of Johnsonville Brats. Greg Lucas back with Norm Hitchcock. This is Cleveland Stadium. It has been around since the 30s. Yep. Had some great moments. Not as many wins as the Indians would have liked. No, longest ball ever hit in this stadium was hit up there by Luke Easter, luscious Luke Easter, into those yellow seats, 477 feet from home plate. That was a big poop, big poop for Luke, big poke for Luke. He was quite a power hitter. Had some big years in your old neck of the woods, Buffalo. In the yeah. There's a strike to Rodriguez, who doubled and scored in the first. In that section, what's that? What's that usher doing up there? There's nobody sitting there, and there's an usher for that section. Either it's a, a government worker, or <laughs> we have—he's uh, supposed to keep people out. There's a shot to center field. Howard has room, and Rodriguez is the first out. Smooth, ice cold, and refreshing Slurpee can be found at 7-Eleven and only at 7-Eleven. So stop by your 7-Eleven store today for a Slurpee, the coolest thing on earth. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. I, one gets the feeling this man's not going to be very busy tonight taking notice, care of the clientele. Notice he had his rag to wipe off the seats when the people came in, too. He didn't going to get a whole lot of tips. Here's Rafael Palmero who had a two run homer in the first. Slow night at the office. Eh? <laughs> yeah. 
There's a high pop. Short center. Howard coming in. For mean back, Howard, plenty of time. Two outs. Don't look now, Greg, but after Palmero shoots one into the net that, that protects the vacant picnic area, this guy Mesa has settled down, and he's been good. So Palmero has been retired after the homer, and here's Dean Palmer who struck out the first time. He had a strange first inning. He struck out the side. The only three strikeouts that Mesa has. But they were sandwiched around two homers and a double. Since then, no strikeouts, but he's gotten everybody out. That's right. No strikeouts and no hits allowed. Inside corner strike to Palmer. Well, you know, Mesa has a funny history this season. He, he's had four starts that he won. In those four games, he's allowed one earned run. Can you imagine that? Mm. One earned run in those four games. In the other six starts, his earned run average is 6.2. So, like we said early, when he's good, he's very, very good. When he's bad, he can be horrible. Palmer pops one up right side. Foul territory. Going to stay fair, it looks like. Maybe. Bayerga gets it right on the line, and that's the third out. So that retires the side. One, two, three. Mesa, very, very good for the third inning in a row. Rangers will face Martinez, Jefferson, and Hill at the bottom of the fourth with a 3-1 Texas lead. Bottom of the fourth, the Indians and the Rangers. Rangers leading three to one. It's Carlos Martinez, Reggie Jefferson, and Glenn Allen Hill coming up to face Kenny Rogers, who has scattered four hits and given up one run on a ground out by Bayerga. Thomas Howard scoring in the last inning. Handle bloop right side. That'll be tough, and it'll be foul. Fortunately for the Rangers, no balls and a strike. Martinez hit a ball hard, ending the first inning that was caught by Canseco backhanding, and had he not been able to get to it, Two runs would have scored, and Martinez would have been on at least second, maybe third. But he did catch it, and that prevented Rogers getting in any first inning trouble. Or getting in any deep trouble, anyway. Martinez takes his time getting back to the plate. He was originally signed as a free agent by the Yankees and then went to the White Sox with Ron Hassey and Bill Lindsay for Ron Kittle, Joel Skinner, and Wayne Tollison, former Ranger in 86, and came here as a free agent. Carlos is a player like Albert Bell who's had some real personal problems in the past. Bell's struggle was with alcohol. Martinez with his anger. Yeah, Usher's like our friend out in the outfield that uh, didn't get along with him in Venezuela. Was it Venezuela? Yeah, Venezuela. Uh, suspended for fighting there and Suspended for not running out ground balls, not hustling, and the White Sox really got upset with him. High fly ball, right field deep. Canseco back to the track. Look it up. It is off his head, it looked like. And over the top. A home run. That looked like it hit Canseco on the top of the head. We'll have to check the replay. Oh, it did. It went over the fence. David Hulse laughing out there, so it uh, must hit something funny. Well, this week in baseball has its lead piece of video. It either in his head or his shoulder. Let's take a look at it. Martinez, fourth home run of the year. And Canseco goes back to the wall. He looks like he's, you know, he's checking the wall. He's checking the ball. Checking the wall and the ball. Reaches up. It's him right there. He goes over the top. <laughs> it hit Canseco in the head. <laughs> and bounced over the wall for a homer. Look at this. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> and it's out of here. <laughs> no wonder David Hulse was laughing when he went over there. <laughs> Jose, you've hit a lot of home runs. You did a lot of great things, but that shot will live forever. That is, you will be remembered for that forever. Forget all the homers. Here's Reggie Jefferson. <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to the television term headshot. Oh, my. <laughs> Look at how Oh, my. You see something funny every night at the park, don't you? <laughs> it's a three to two game. <laughs> oh. And right on the 
left leg. Jefferson is hit by a pitch. Well, the fans may boo, but the absolute last thing in the world, Kenny Rogers, with a one-run lead, wanted to do with nobody out, is plunk somebody. Oh, my. And you get a feeling the Rangers are getting uncomfortable in this game. I mean, it's nice to have a lead, but Gregory, uh, let's be honest here, Mesa looks like he's putting it together for the Indians. There's nobody out here. And while obviously the ball that Canseco headed over the wall uh, could have been caught, let's not forget it was very well hit. And that pitch is in for a ball. One ball, no strikes. You know what's funny? Remember it was Martinez who hit the ball that Canseco made the sliding catch on to take him. And Martinez went back in the dugout and scattered the Gatorade cups. He was so, he was so mad in the first inning. I think Jose paid him back. One ball and no strikes. That is a swing. One ball and one strike to Glenn Allen Hill, who grounded out his first time. This is a guy that the Blue Jays felt had major, major power. They eventually agreed to give him up, and he's just never quite taken the next step up to start him in the major leagues. This is... Uh, and not to be flip about this, this is the guy with the fear of spiders. And it's not a good stadium for him to play. No. <laughs> Here's the three-two pitch or the uh, the one-one pitch. One ball and two strikes. <laughs> that time he had a little trouble with a breaking ball, but you know this park is got a lot of character, which is another way of saying it's pretty old. Yes, it's and rustic. It has a few spiders. Yeah. One ball and two strikes. Rangers on top by one and a toss to first. <laughs> that first big. Hill, in fact, two years ago, for those who haven't said the story, went on the disabled list with cuts on his arms and legs when during a nightmare he got out of bed and was crawling, banging into things in his house, trying to get away from spiders. Well, the injury report is actually not so bad. Maybe. Yeah, it's a torn right quadricep muscle. Did you say Frank? torn or pulled? Pulled? Pulled. Pulled. Yeah. That's not bad. No, torn would be bad, but it's it, neither one is knee, and that's that's good. This is on the inside corner with a fastball. Rogers wanted it, didn't get it. And the count goes full. Just misses. That's the pitch Rogers wanted. Now, Hill is a player who will strike out. And strike out a lot with Rodriguez catching. That probably limits the thoughts of the Indians running with Jefferson at first base. On the other hand, the Indians hit into a ton of double plays. Not going, and the pitch is wide, and two on with still nobody out. That is only the first walk given up by Kenny. And the phone rings in the Ranger bullpen, it appears. Yeah, here comes Claude Osteen to take some time now the Rangers can go with anybody I mean earlier I was going to say this was a really important start for Kenny and it is but as far as the Rangers total pitching staff it's not so important in the sense that with two complete games in a row virtually anybody can pitch but it's it's you know it's one of those deals the Rangers need a consistent starting uh, role from Rogers and that's why it's important for him. Well, nobody has gotten up, so nobody called. But they have plenty of people who could answer the bell. Alvaro Espinosa, who was called out on strikes his first time, the hitter now, with very nobody out, a possible bunt situation uh, with Espinosa up. Very, very good bunter. And after the first pitch, we'll give you that double play stat on the Indians. No bunt. Short fly ball. Hulse comes in. He's going to make the catch. No tags on this play. Everyone goes halfway. And well, second guess here. It should have been bunting, but that's one out. The Indians this year have a major discrepancy in turning double plays as opposed to hitting into double plays. Mike Hargrove's team has hit into 53 double plays. Uh, that's a Greg, when you figure that for the Indians. 
they are only 46 games into the season. 53 double plays is a ton, and they've pulled only 34 double plays. Rangers now can get out of trouble here with Ortiz. You want to talk about the defense. Uh, Canseco is very shallow and over in right. Everyone's pretty shallow for Ortiz, as you can see, but they're pulled around to the right side. A double play here can get the Rangers out of the inning. The pitch is inside for a ball. Junior, though, is swinging the bat pretty well after a cold streak. And Junior is not much of a threat to walk. He has won this year. <laughs> Last year at 250 with no homers and 12 RBIs. He's runners go double steal hit and run and the play will have to go to first base. So it was a hit and run but judging from the pitch that was swung at but the out retired now two outs. Two runners in scoring position though so Rogers has to get Howard. And he's only gotten him once, and he's hit the ball hard twice. He has flied deep to the warning track in center and singled and later scored. He has first base open, but, and for me, the next hitter, so he can be a little bit careful with him. There are two outs. Rangers lead by a run three to two and that one's wide. Kenny again throwing a high percentage of very slow breaking balls and that's unlike Kenny Rogers. One oh pitch. There's another one. That's low. Two balls no strikes. Rangers coming up in the fifth inning will have Strange Redis and Gill the bottom three in the batting order. And if they go five deep, we'll find out who's going to be the designated hitter because uh, the Franco spot would be up. Off the end of the bat, another slow breaking ball into the Indian dugout. You know, Cleveland is a town that while they get maligned for low attendance and, uh, you know, you know that this is a good baseball town and if they ever we're in contention. I mean, let alone win, just get in contention. There are a lot of baseball fans here. They'll show up next year with their new park anyway, but they got in contention again. That pitch is inside. It's just so hard to go year after year after year and not winning is one thing, but not even being a threat. Something else. Well, the Indians last won in 54. They've only been a, a threat four or five times and, and then not for the whole season since then. Howard swings through it. The count goes full. Three balls and two strikes now with two outs. This is a pitch Kenny can make a real good one. This was the one he can try to make perfect because again if he loses him it's not crucial. He just doesn't want to give in to Howard here with Vermeen up next. Exactly what he did. He missed with it, tried to keep it away, and the bases were loaded. He wanted the strike. You can see he was disgusted when he got the ball back. But he also was only throwing it to a certain spot. He missed it. Now he's got to get Fermin. Fermin did double the last time up. He slapped it past Palmer at third. Bases are loaded. Jefferson is at third base. Hill is at second, and now Howard is at first. That's two walks and a hit batsman in this inning. Carlos Martinez home run off Jose Canseco's head let off the inning and if you missed it that's exactly what happened. Right side base hit here comes the tying run Canseco will cut loose with a throw to the plate Rodriguez makes it tags not in time and the Indians have the lead as Felix Fermin drives in two and we're in the fourth and the Indians have taken a 4-3 lead. Canseco plays this as well as he can. Pudge actually, actually looked like he made a mistake here, Greg. He goes out to catch the ball. If he'd have stayed at home plate and blocked the plate, he may well have had the runner there. But Pudge left home plate to catch the ball, then tried to come back. 
and it appeared to have cost the Rangers an out and a run well, at the end of the inning. I, I agree, except I think he was afraid of where the short hop was going to be. And, you know, the hop was going to be very close to the plate, and that would have been very difficult to handle. And so I'm not going to second guess him on that because I think he was trying to get it because he was going to be short hopped. The hitter is Bayerga. Bayerga has driven in a run with a ground out. Runners at second and third, Howard and Fermin. There's a fly ball to right field. Can Seiko over toward the line? It will be a fair ball. Makes the catch, and that retires the side. In the inning, however, the Indians get three. Two walks and a hit. Batsman contribute, but a couple of hits, and we played four. It's 4-3, four, Indians. Golf is a game of a lifetime to be enjoyed by people of all ages. From our junior golf program to our senior tournaments, everyone seems to enjoy the game. Yeah, the Rangers have lost the lead now, but only by a run. We go to the top of the fifth. It is four to three in favor of the Indians. It'll be Doug Strange who flied to left field in foul territory. Albert Bell making the catch in the second. He's 0 for 1. Mesa has retired. Nine, ten in a row. He has three strikeouts. They all came in the first inning. Rangers homer by Franco, a double by Rodriguez, and a homer by Palmero got him going. And again, first pitch hitting. Jefferson makes the play. And Strange has seen two pitchers. He's liked them both, but he'd like to have them both back. There's one out. And two streaks continue. Mesa's mowed down 11 in a row, and Doug Strange now hitless 17 at bats in a row. Another guy we talk about uh, getting close to being ready to play again would be Bill Ripken. Friday. Danny he's, Wheat was telling me today Friday. He yeah, he's, he's been with the club and. Reedus is the hitter now Reedus flied to center the first time up. And Houston apparently. On Friday also. Yeah, he's at Oklahoma City getting some at bats. There is a strike. So the Rangers would have a couple there's Ripken in the jacket. That might signal sending to the minor leagues both Gill and Shea when Ripken and Houston apparently are activated Friday. Yeah, one uh, reason is because Ripken really gives you the potential to play both positions because he can play shortstop in a backup position. And while uh, Houston at least has looked to be the better at second base, has played a lot of shortstop, and he's, he's certainly at least adequate there. By the way, some bad news about Manny Lee. They took the cast off the thumb today, re-examined it. They're going to do an MRI on Manny Lee's thumb when the club gets back home. They're worried that it's a torn thumb ligament. Doesn't seem to be healing as quickly as they had hoped. There's a pitch that's low. Reed is 3-1. Well, and they gave that discouraging it's week to week with Lee, and that seems to suggest multiple weeks before Manny Lee is back. And Reedus draws the walk with one out. That's the first the Rangers have picked up off of Mesa and Benji Gill will be the hitter. By the way, between innings, Jeff Bronke was up and in throwing last inning. Between innings, Bronke came back down into the dugout. Now, normally that's a sign that the reliever's coming in, but you wouldn't think Bronke would, would spend the whole inning sitting in the dugout. You'd think he'd stay down there and throw a little bit more. A couple people going out there. Bohannon on the left and Russell, the bullpen catcher, and he'll uh, go down to the bullpen. Well, they've all had some rest. Benji Gill lined out the center field. Last couple at bats. His last at bat in yesterday's game, he lined to right and he lined to center here. Maybe that's a sign that he's starting to come around and make more contact. The Indians have some bullpen action now too, double barrel as a matter of fact. Well, you got to remember Mesa's working for the first time in his life on three days rest, and Mike Cargrove said before the game he'd be very, very careful with Mesa. Here's the one ball, no strike pitch. They got Mark Clark. There you see him in the background. Mark Clark and uh, also Matt Young. Uh, Wait a minute. No. Cliff, Cliff Young. Young. Cliff Young. Cliff's the left hander. They have a Matt Young, but he's a right. -hander. No, he's a left hander too. Isn't he? Sure, Matt Young. Yeah, Matt Young too. is a left hander too. 
Anthony Young is the right-hander with the Mets, and none of the Youngs have a W. <laughs> that's true. I saw that before. 1-0 pitch, and that's a little wide to Gill, and two balls, no strikes, and now at least a quick talk from pitching coach Adair. Rick Adair certainly is born up in a uh, born into a family where he should be involved in baseball. This is the nephew of Art Fowler. There's a longtime major league pitching coach, primarily for Billy Martin. He was the guy that was famous for the line. The Babe Ruth is dead. Whenever a pitcher came out, he went out and talked to a pitcher who wasn't throwing strikes. It was Art Fowler who was credited with first saying that. Throw it over the plate. Babe Ruth's dead. That's making it succinct, I suppose. By the way, Ricky Dare is also the cousin of uh, Wayne Tollis. Remember Tolly played for the Rangers? Two balls and no strikes here. Of course, you know, looking at this from the Indian standpoint, they're really upset here that he's 2-0 and on Gill because Gill, because he has not produced the point in the major leagues, is one of those you have to go right after, which means throw strikes. And if you can't throw a strike to a pitcher that you're a hitter that you're not supposed to be afraid of, then it does show that maybe you're tired. Mace has had terrible control problems much of his career. Well, he threw one there, just caught the inside corner. Two balls and a strike. Mesa this year has struck out 40 and walked 16. That is fabulous for Mesa, who came into the year having walked more hitters than he struck out in his major league career. That's an ugly stat. <laughs> Rangers have tomorrow off and then move into Boston. For games over the weekend and Minnesota on Monday and we'll have our next HSE telecast on Wednesday from Minneapolis. Rangers won't be back home until Friday the 4th when they play the Yankees. They got some special promotions coming up. We'll talk about them a little later. Bouncing ball foul. Two balls two strikes Benji Gill. Checks Dave Oliver third. Rangers trailing by just one. Reed is at first base. Can run if they'd like to keep him out of the double play. And remember, this is the 2 2 count. Quite often, the Rangers do go on this pitch. A lot of teams do. <laughs> Reed is in frozen motion. There's no sense going all the way back if I don't have to. I'm getting old. Not going, and the pitch is driven up the middle for a base hit off the bat of Gale, who really went in and got a pitch in on his hands, did a good job of guiding it up the middle. So Benji Gill with the base knock. And David Hulse will be up. Good piece of hitting by Gill because Mesa made a pretty good pitch here. 2 2 in the count. Mesa gets the fastball right on the inside corner. And Gill with a nice job of getting the ball out of that kitchen and up the middle. He brought his hands into the body and kept himself from being jammed. He's got to be happy because that uh, ends that, what, 0 for 26 that he was on. He's now gotten a hit to end that 0 for 26. And now the hitter, Hulse, has been called out on strikes and grounded out. Greg, the Rangers have uh, put Butch Davis onto the uh, on deck circle. So he will be the new designated hitter. Foul ball. Hull's first time up. Excellent pitch. There you see Butch. He'll be in as the designated hitter replacing Franco. All of a sudden, Kevin Kennedy doesn't have much of a bench to work with, does he? Running through the players. Because he's got uh, Gonzalez is here, but not able to play. And now Franco is out of the lineup. He's got Petrali and he's got uh, Shave. Shave, yeah. And Desenzo. That's it. And there's your bench tonight. No balls and a strike. Rangers have the tying run at second, and Hulse fouls another one into the upper deck. Rangers scored three in the first a homer by Franco, a double by Rodriguez, and a two run homer by Palmero. And it was 
three nothing till the bottom of the third when after a single by Howard and a double by Fermin by Ergis ground ball brought in the first run fourth inning Cleveland scored three more a hit batsman and two walks factored although Fermin had a two run single and Martinez homered off Jose Canseco's head that's fouled away Ooh, that's going to keep me a little looser for the night the way that one <laughs> bulleted back up to this level and we're close we have an excellent broadcast location talking with uh, Eric Nadell Ranger radio man before the game he says he's he's really going to miss this ballpark there you see because we are so close to home plate it is such a great view right down on top of the play and pulse Chops the ball by Erga backhand. There's one. It's a double play. By Erga makes the play by himself, and the Rangers get a couple on, but can't cash. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth with the Albert Bell, the leadoff man, in the inning coming up in a 4-3 Cleveland lead. Here's the course line upcoming Rangers schedule on HSC next Wednesday at 7.05. Rangers will be in Minnesota to take on Kirby Puckett, Dave Winfield, and the rest of the Twins. Then on Sunday, June 6th, Wade Boggs and the New York Yankees will be in Arlington to take on the Rangers. Check your local listings for more information. By the way, we might mention that June 6th game is a special game for you at Arlington Stadium. If you uh, can make it, the first 35,000 fans entering the stadium with a paid admission will receive series number two of the Keebler Tom Thumb all-time Texas Ranger baseball card series. Series number two features Buddy Bell, Harold Baines, Burt Blylevin, and Steve Bouchel, among others. This is a season-long series that will include all players, managers, and coaches who've ever played a game with Texas. Compliments of Keebler and Tom Thumb, and that will be on the sixth against New York. That's the next Ranger promotion. So if you're keeping up with your card collections, you want to put that game on the schedule. Here's Albert Bell. High fly ball, center field. David Hulse will come in. That's one out. Greg, we just received further information on Julio Franco. Right now, this is a pulled quadriceps muscle. We are told it looks pretty bad, that Franco will not accompany the team to Boston, that he will stay here in Cleveland and tomorrow morning have an MRI done to determine the extent of the injury. But right now, it appears that Franco may be headed for the disabled list. Quadricep is the muscle on the top of the lot of the thigh, the front of the thigh. Here's Carlos Martinez who hit that home run last time up that will live forever in the memory <laughs> of a couple of people. Well, I'm not sure Jose Canseco remembers it, quite honestly. <laughs> he let off the fourth, and that was the first run scored. There's a strike inside. A count two balls and a strike. Rangers at this time led by a score of three to one and Martinez was only at five home runs his career high and that's one of the criticisms about him that he's a big guy six five ought to hit more. There's a strike on the outside corner. He got one and uh, drove it to the track and right. And Seiko reached up for it but misjudged it just a little bit. Hit him on the top of the head and went over the fence. That started the inning. There's a foul ball. Oh, gee. <laughs> Carlos has had some strange at bats tonight. That ball would have bounced in the left hand hitter's batter's box had not Carlos gotten a bat on it. Look at Carlos. <laughs> How can I swing at a pitch like that, shaking his head? That's into the crowd. If you did not see it, you're going to want to. Hope you have your VCRs on because you're going to see this play before. Canseco reaches back. He's got it. Nope. Home run, folks. Right off the top of Canseco's head and over the wall. That's what Martinez did last time. This time he pops up on the infield. Now it's drifting back into short center field, coming over for it. Reedus. And Gary makes the play two outs. Well, so far through two hitters, Rogers having an easy fifth. He has had only one one-two-three inning, and that was in the second when he got Jefferson Hill and Espinosa. 
And now he faces Jefferson for the third time. Indians got Jefferson in the summer of 1991 from the Reds, and it remains one of the most embarrassing few day periods in the recent history of the Reds organization. Actually, the Indians helped him out a little bit. The <laughs> Reds, yeah, they did help him out. They gave him Tim Costa they gave when, him a they, player. when they didn't have to really give him anything because the Reds had pulled a major mistake. Well, well, speaking of mistakes, Benji Gill came up when he shouldn't have. And Jefferson is on. Well, he's going to be on because that gives Norm time to tell the story. That's exactly right. Jefferson, they were going to send down. They had to activate some people, Bill Dorn and Barry Larkin. But he had pneumonia, and you can't send a player down with pneumonia. Now, to save having to pay him five days of Major League salary, they instead designated him for assignment, which means you have to do something with him in 10 days. Well, he wasn't well yet. He had a bruised chest, chest with pneumonia, and that means you got to wave it. And oh my, the wailing in Cincinnati. That's fouled back. And as we said, to finish up the story, the Indians actually traded him a player, and they didn't have to. They could have just signed him. Well, Benji Gill, uh, with two outs, uh, didn't stay down on the ball, did he? Well, now see. Benji's got to leaf through that Jim Sunberg, Dave Burchett practice planner. <laughs> he let the ball play him, too. He was backing up on it. He was going to throw him out with the arm, and that's when you get those bad hops. Hill misses the pitch. Hill is grounded out and walk. Four to three, Indians on top. Indians have four runs, six hits, no errors. Texas, three runs, four hits, and one error. And you just saw that. Not a factor in the scoring. In the crowd. A bigger crowd, I think, than last night. Last night's crowd was about 12,000, more people in the upper deck. But the biggest problem with this stadium, it is so huge that crowds of 20,000, and we may be in that neighborhood, don't look big. That's high and away, and it's one and two. Glenn Allen Hill. Came in hitting 250. And he is burned out of there. That's strikeout number two for Kenny. Gives up only one base run on an error. We've played five, and it's four to three Cleveland on HSC. We're halfway through the ball game in our Gatorade game summary. Palmero's two-run homer in the first helped the Rangers to a three-nothing lead. Julio Frank, however, had to leave later with an injury. A quadricep pull that uh, looks rather serious and will keep him out for a while. And Felix Fermin, two for three, two RBIs. His two RBIs putting the engines on top as we go here to the sixth. Rangers will have Butch Davis hitting for the first time against Mark Clark who will be pitching for the first time in this game. Big right hander acquired right at the end of spring training from St. Louis along with shortstop Juan and for outfielder Mark Witten and he's not done terribly well for the Indians so far. Um, Clark came up last year with the Cardinals and made 20 starts there was three wins and 10 losses with an earned run average in the mid fours. Whoops. And the Indians basically would never have made the trade uh, to send Witten away, except the tragedy in spring training with the deaths of Olin and Cruz left them so short of pitching. Bob Ojeda, they have no idea he was injured in that. That's the Indian pitchers, the numbers of Olin and Hughes. And Cruz, yeah, that's put in the dugout, or in, uh, in and the Cruz, bullpen, yeah. actually, in the Indians' uh, bullpen. Bench. Foul ball. Matter of fact, uh, we were talking before the game in the Indian offices. This club, uh, for a while, kept a locker for Steve Olin on the road. They would go on the road and still keep an empty locker in the memory of Steve Olin and have one at home in memory of their star reliever, Steve Olin. There's the one two to Davis, and he reaches for one and pops it up. For me, the shortstop with the catch one. Clark's a big youngster, a former ninth round draft choice by the Cardinals in June of 1988 after a career at Lincoln Land Community College. 
He's originally from the town of Bath, Illinois. Here's Kenseko. Kenseko has struck out and grounded out. And <laughs> contributed to a home run. Now he's got a chance now to make amends by putting one in the upper deck himself, which he did last night. That's two nights in a row he's knocked one over the fence. That's right. And that means he's hit him over the fence for at least three teams. There's a Whoop. foul ball just outside the line. Boy, a lot of guys jumped on that one in the Ranger bullpen, didn't they? <laughs> They're almost in the game down there. They, of course, bullpen pitchers like that kind of a setup. They're away from everybody else. They have their own little world. And in this particular case, uh, the bullpen dugouts are set up so they can actually see the game. Just missed on the inside. It's two balls and a strike. And a couple of minor league notes will pass on from the Rangers system over the next few minutes. One out, two balls and a strike to Canseco, and he slaps it to the hole, left side. Speared by Espinoza, who saved a base hit with wide-ranging defensive play, and that's two outs. Good play by Alvaro. The Rangers AAA farm team in Oklahoma City, which is off to a dreadful start, 13 wins and 27 losses, were one hit last night. Mario Diaz gets the only hit. Jeff Houston 0 for 2. Uh, played second base. It was the second game of his Oak City rehab assignment. Tulsa also lost with Kurt Miller being the starter and loser there, but Tulsa didn't get him any runs. It was a 4 nothing loss by Kurt Miller and Tulsa to middle. Rodriguez has a double and a fly ball. Is up with two outs. Nobody on. Rangers down by one. Meanwhile, Greg, that Charleston team has won again. For the 25th time, and Kerry Lacey had his 18th save. He's money in the bank. There's a bouncer again to Espinosa, bouncing back on the heels of his feet, making the play across the diamond, and that retires the side. One, two, three for the Rangers. And we've played through five and a half, Cleveland by one. Big college baseball action. Four regions being played in our home sports entertainment five state area. Tickets available. Starting Thursday, College Station, you want to call for tickets there, 1 800 800 SWC 8. That's uh, number six. Uh, the same number for the Austin region, 1 800 800 SWC 8, number five. Also at Stillwater, Oklahoma, and Baton Rouge. There you see the numbers. These are for NCAA regional baseball tickets. Baton Rouge, 504 388 2184. And of course, at the Stillwater, it's area code 405-744-5745. So if you are in the area of any of these regions, please take advantage and catch college baseball starting this week. In fact, uh, starting tomorrow, regional play begins. Alvaro Espinosa leading off the count, no balls and two strikes. He's called out on strikes in the second and flied to center in the fourth. I like those goggles he's got. Real space agent. Well, he can see with him, can't he? Base hit. Rogers picked the dive off the mound and couldn't get to it. That's a seventh hit now. And the Rangers have Bronchi and Bohannon, who Bronchi's been up once before. Bohannon went down to the bullpen not long ago. With the lead. And the number eight hitter on, this is almost an invitation to a bunt situation uh, for Mike Hargrove and the Indians to try to get a second run for their lead. By the way, for the Indians, it's important that they've reached this point of the game because they have a dreadful record when they trail after six. Ortiz gets the good bunt down. Kenny Rogers fires it across, going to third base to throw through. He's not in time. Heads up play by Alvaro Espinosa as he did not slow down rounding the bag, although, to be honest, the Rangers still could have made the play had the throw been true and had it been handled. It's a sacrifice and aggressive running by Espinosa. 
it's the bunt and run for the Indians. Ortiz has to bunt this ball to third base. The intent is to make Palmer field it. But when he doesn't, Palmer retreats to the bag, and he's there. But the throw isn't. It it's bounced a one again. Now, we had one earlier this year in which uh, Raffi bounced it on that same play. And now the infield has to come in with you know, Thomas Howard up. Partly in Rafi's defense, Benji Hill, Benji Gill and Rodriguez were running to third. He had a whole bunch of people headed in that direction to try to throw the ball to. But they were hustling. They were hustling because, again, somebody had to cover the base if Palmer couldn't get back. But you're right. Good play by the Indians. Howard has flied out, single and walked. No balls and a strike. Rangers down by one and in danger of being down by two as the infield is in on the play. And a squeeze is not out of the question here. Now it may be. No balls and two strikes as he swung at one. It didn't look like it was in the zone. Thomas Howard with one hit in two trips. Mike Hargrove, the skipper, the well, his career was linked to Cleveland and Texas. Those are the two main franchises that he played with. His rookie of the year with the Rangers in 74. And came over here and finished up. Runner holds. Palmero goes and makes the play. And that would indicate that they did not have a contact play on, obviously, because the runner would have been coming, but that was simply because the infield was in. And now, with two outs. It's Fermin, who the Rangers have not been able to handle in this game. He doubled in the third and singled and drove in two in the fourth. Here's a chance where the Indians could pull one of Greg Lucas' favorite plays. Fermin is a very good bunner, and the Rangers must be awake for the possibility of Fermin bunning for a base hit here. Yeah, to the right side with a first baseman deep, but instead he takes the breaking ball for a strike. Palmer not playing real deep he might be able to handle a bunt that had any speed on it to the third base side but the right side the uh, first baseman Palmero well off the bag and deep and, and of course the second baseman strength that's where the hole is no indication that's in his mind in fact he's ripping away at a pitch there that he almost jumped out of his shoes to swing at no balls and two strikes now remember the Rangers <laughs> ran that play once themselves and then they Palmero was at third base and didn't work earlier this year. He didn't come in. And, and Strange bunted for a base hit on the yes. play. No balls and two strikes. Foul back again. Boy, for me, looks confident tonight, doesn't he? He, he is just jumping on pitches. <laughs> He's had one home run in his life as a pro. Now, we're not talking major leagues. We're talking as a pro. That was in 1990 against the White Sox. I mean, that ended a stretch of almost, well, 2,915 at bats, including the minors. I wonder if he and Al Newman ever got together and talked <laughs> in the major leagues. And there's another hit. He doesn't need hits. He just gets base hits. Vermeen has three hits in the ball game. And this is a guy that 255 career hitter, but he's always hit left-handers better. Is evidenced by a 333 average last year, averaged by a 750 in this game. Well, and Greg, doggone, you, you, if you're the Rangers, you look at that and you say, Rogers had him 0 and 2. And that, that really, for Kenny, was too good a pitch for an 0 and 2 count. Here's Bayerga now with Fermin at first, blocked by Rodriguez. Rangers down by a couple now, 5 to 3 in the bottom of the sixth. For Kenny Rogers, this could well be his last man. Now, it really doesn't matter to bring in a pitcher to Bayerga, who is a switch hitter. But the next hitter is right-handed, Bell. Bronchi's ready in the bullpen. So this could be a last-man face situation for Rogers. And, and in any event, even if he gets Bayerga out, because you're talking about the seventh inning, mm -hmm. next inning. And you're looking about a string of right-handers to start next inning. One ball and a strike. Boy, the Rangers give Bayerga a ton of the left field line. A ton of the left field line. He has an open stance, and as the ball comes to the plate, he, he moves that left foot toward the plate.
which can lock your hips. That pitch is wide. Two balls and a strike. For me, one of those players that when he goes back to first base on a throw from the pitcher, puts his hand up over the ear flap uh, as those sort of protecting the ear, but the ear's already protected and exposes his hand. Fly ball right field, curving toward the line. And Seiko is, it's a fair ball. He makes the, doesn't make the play again. One run will score. Going into third base is Baerga. I don't know about the call. That appeared to be a foul ball. The call was made by first base umpire John Shulock. And I don't think Canseco can believe that ball was called fair. Now, it doesn't matter where Canseco is. It matters. And Shulock saying, well, it touched his glove. Well, sure it touched his glove. But it's where the ball is what matters. That's right. Shulock is motioning that it touched his glove. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Uh, that, no. Yeah. Uh, that looks like it might have been fair. Now, again, our angle is a little bit off to the right. There he is crossing the line, but the glove comes back. Boy, that's hard to see. And you certainly can't argue with Shulock's call at this point. Well, the problem is the ball should have been caught. Yes. And that's a couple that Jose has not played in right field, and it's cost the Rangers a couple of runs. It's going to go in as a triple. And it's going to be the end of Rodgers as here comes Afghanistan-born Jeff Bronke. And at least the Rod Rodgers we saw tonight was was considerably better than his last three starts. You know Kenny's still not happy with his out. Bottom of the six, it's Cleveland six and Texas three. And we'll be right back. All right, it's the Cleveland leading six to three as Bronchi warms up in the bottom of the six. Do we have another replay of the play in right field? I, I thought that's what you were calling for. Now, does he, he may not even have touched the ball. Okay, he didn't, he didn't even touch it. Now, the next question is where did it land? And I, I don't know whether our replays. Okay, he doesn't touch it. Now, where did it land? And it looked like a foul ball, doesn't it? Yeah. it? yeah, it could have hit foul, but again, we've slowed it down. John Shulak doesn't have that advantage. Plus, he's conceivably blocked out by Canseco's body at that point. So that it is impossible, certainly, to second guess Shulak's call a fair well, foul. And what he's talking about with it hitting the glove is he's saying that the reason it landed foul is because it hit the glove. Mm -hmm. Although apparently it didn't even hit the glove. So well, Bell fouls it back to the screen. There's our pitcher, Jeff Bronke. Let's take a look at our roll aid relief uh, standings as we take it Bronke's numbers. The relief break shows Aguilera and Russell running 1-2 in the American League with Stanton and Harvey 1-2. 51 points already for Stanton. 17 says, of course, you play with a team like the Braves. <laughs> the starters they got, they're going to give you a lot of leads late. Jeff Russell has really stabilized the Boston bullpen. And for Harvey to be second with the Marlins, there's not a lot to save in Florida. Oh. He saves all that's there, though. That's mm -hmm. a strike on the inside corner to Bell. The count now one and two. Jeff Bronke, after some good initial outings, has been hit fairly hard lately. In his last eight and third, eight and third innings over five games, he's allowed eight runs. Only four of them earned. He wants to keep this runner from scoring now with two outs. Misses in. It's two and two. This game started with such promise for the Rangers. They had three runs before they had three outs. But that's it. They have not scored since. There's a foul ball. Home run by Franco. And then a two run homer for Palmero. And there you see it. Three runs in the first and nothing since. In fact, 
almost literally nothing since. Yeah, only one hit since for the Rangers. Bohannon continues to warm in the Ranger bullpen as Bronke has a 2-2 count with two outs to Bell. Runner third base is by Ergo. Three balls, two strikes. Standing on deck, Carlos Martinez. to three. That's the tenth Indian hit. And it closes the door on Rogers earned runs. And there were a few. All seven. Well, Albert Bell's averaging an RBI every four at bats, so there's his RBI in four at bats tonight. 43rd of the year leading the American League, and you can see he measured the slide exactly enough. Here's Martinez now. Ball one. One ball and no strikes. Martinez is lined out, homered, and fly to left. The Indians have had a three-run inning twice in the fourth and here in the sixth. Closes the book on Kenny Rogers. Broken bat shortstop Benji Gill. And that closes the book on the Indians in the sixth, but three runs on three hits. No errors, one left. We played six. Seven three, Cleveland. A decade of sports, ten years of entertainment. HSE. It's Cleveland Stadium, and Rangers coming up in the seventh, trailing by four. Palmero, Palmer, and Strange. And he takes the first pitch outside. Palmero has homered and flied to center. A lot of big moments in this stadium, but most of them, to be quite honest, have been football. Yeah. Because the big wins have been in football. The Indians played in the 54 World Series and played two games here and lost them both. And they've won in 48. That's fouled back into the crowd. This uh, Cleveland Stadium was open, Municipal Stadium, right on the shores of Lake Erie, was open July 31st, 1932. The Indians, for 15 years, then split their home games between this place and League Park. They'd play here on the weekends and League Park on the weekdays. Uh, this is the permanent home of the Cleveland Browns and will remain so even after the Indians moved there new stadium next year. Palmero pops one back into the upper deck. The football stadium runs. We would be in, in essence the end zone to the left if you watch a game on television here. That's the football press box on the roof. They are a long way from the ball game. It, it, first of all it's 115 feet up to the roof. <laughs> so figure you're in about an 11 story press box. Palmero rips it hard in the right field for a base hit. So Palmero gets the Rangers' first hit since the fifth inning when Benji Gill singled. And a first off Mark Clark. Clark up and out over the plate. Palmero stings another one. You see also on the shot of the field, you see two tone grass. Well, they've Planted sod, of course, that in center field there, right behind second base, that's really the middle of the football field. The field runs uh, from center field, which is where the uh, infamous or famous hogs sit in the bleachers out there. Uh, that's behind the end zone. The, dog. uh, not the hogs, the dogs. The dog, yeah, that's the, the dogs. Dog the old line. By the that's way, the dog we'll talk about center field a little bit later. That fence, the inner fence there, the blue fence was not put in this stadium till 1947. Palmer swings through with a one hand. No balls and two strikes. Dean's 0 for 2. He struck out and popped up. Before 1947, this stadium was a killer. He went all the way to that brick wall. All, all the way, way to the around. brick wall. 
you see, those are temporary bleachers. Those, those blue ones, those back bleachers are where the wall was. And Palmer fans for the first out. That, see where 60-61 is up there? That's where the, the temporary bleachers were constructed. To dead center field in this park, when it opened, it was 502 feet. The architects were all pitchers. By the way, that's not untrue. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Strange. There's a strike. He is, well, that's first, only the third pitch he's seen. He's 0 for 2, and first two times up, he hit the first pitch. Fouled out and bounced out to the first baseman. Rangers down by a 7 to 3 score. There goes the runner at first. The pitch is low. Ortiz throw is not in time. Stolen base for Palmero. Twinkle toes Palmero now has stolen nine of ten. He jammed himself a little bit going into the bag, but he'll be all right. He has the best percentage on the team. Uh, Hulse is the only one who has more steals with 11. He's in scoring position now for Strange on a 1-1 count. There's a base hit. Palmero is going to be held at third, so he lost the advantage of stealing second. Because <laughs> he still wasn't able to score. He's still limping a little bit after jamming himself into the bag on the slide. Strange with a base hit. The purpose of stealing second is hopefully going to get you in on a base hit, but the ball was really ripped up the middle. Didn't get a real good jump. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Texaco System 3 Gasolines. In every grade, System 3 helps make the difference in your car's performance. Well, the Rangers have a chance now to get some runs back, get back in the ball game. Reedus has runners on the corners. For Palmero, nine steals represents his total for the last three years as a Ranger. Strange at first base. Rangers facing a defense it's playing for the double play with Reedus. Which means they'll give up the run if he hits anything but a double play ball. If he does, they won't have to. Reedus has flied out and walked. Reedus stepping back in. Gary's going to be getting a lot more playing time now with both Gonzalez and Franco down for a period. Gonzalez, they said one thing, too, down the bench. They were talking about it. he's so disappointed because he so much wants to play in Boston. He loves that fence, that well, wall. Think, think of the games he's going to miss for a home run hitter. Cleveland, Boston, and Minnesota. Those are three places home run hitters love to go. That's going to score the run, and it will not be good enough for two and maybe none. Base hit. Rita still can fly, and he's down with a base hit. He gets an RBI, and the Rangers are back within three. They're down seven to four. Rangers get a break here when Espinosa, the third baseman, can't quite dig the ball out of the glove cleanly. Swinging bunt from Reedus. Now watch Espinosa hesitate at the top. Can't quite get it out of there. Grab the thumb of the glove first, and then Reedus barely beats it. That could be a critical play in this inning because the Rangers are getting around toward the top of the lineup and Kevin Kennedy's going to make his move right now. Yeah, Gino Petrali is going to hit for Gill. You saw in the dugout Palmero still trying to stretch out. Um, this is almost an open invitation for the Indians to go to their bullpen with Petrali who is a oh, he is a switch hitter but primarily good from the left hand side and left hander halts next. Mike Hargrove almost has to go to the left hander Derek Lilliquist in the situation. Well, he's coming out. Of course, we'll see Gino will go the other way. He's switch hitting these days again. In fact, he's taking his swings in the on-deck circle right-handed. And that is going to be the switch as Derek Lilliquist will come in. And so you got to change batting helmets. you got to make sure you get the flap in the right ear. So that's what Petrali went down to do. And he'll hit from the right side. He is being listed finally on the Ranger stats both ways, although he's only had one at bat right handed and he's he's hitless. Here is Derek Lilliquist, the left hander out of the University of Georgia. He was a first round pick of Atlanta in 87 and then traded to the Padres in 90 and then the Padres dumped him after the 91 season claimed off waivers by the Indians. 
And oh, brother, what a pitcher the Indians turned him into. He'd been primarily a starter in his major league career, but the Indians turned him exclusively into a short man out of the bullpen last year, and he responded with a brilliant five win, six save, 1.75 earned run average season, and he is doing it again this year. He's got the ERA at 1.47. Last year he had 15 holds, which is an unofficial statistic, but it is basically what a setup man does and did an outstanding job. He was the college pitcher of the year in 1987 uh, for Georgia. In fact, he set a Southeastern Conference strikeout record with 190 in only 136 and two-thirds innings pitch. And when he was drafted in the first round, that was number six overall by Atlanta. And uh, sort of lost his motion. And the word was that during winter ball between the 91 and 92 seasons, he found it. And that really contributed last year and he is one of these guys who you're not likely going to see a ball down the middle of the plate. If he's on, he's a finesse pitcher, and he'll hit the corners, and he'll nick and nibble and throw strikes, and that's what Petrali's going to have to face here. He will remind you of Craig Lefferts. If you've seen Lefferts when he's pitching well, Lilliquist will remind you of Lefferts. Fastball in the middle 80s, breaking ball, little cutter, change up that he turns over, mixes the ball up well, and as Greg told you, good, generally good location is the key to it. So Lelequis working to Petrali, the switch hitter. And then Hulse, the left-handed hitter, on deck. There's one out, so Petrali is uh, maybe key here to get this thing, get something going with the Rangers as the foul is fouled back just a little bit low of the upper deck. No balls and a strike. Well, and Greg, we could conceivably, if Kevin Kennedy wants to keep him in the lineup, you almost can't imagine it, but if he wants to, Geno's played some second base and Strange could move over to shortstop. Kevin has so little in the way of bench left with the injuries. All he's got is shave and descends him. High fly ball, left center field, Bell and Howard, and Howard will make the play. And he runners play to halfway, so no tag here, two outs. And now Hulse is going back to the dugout. And that would have to be DeCenzo, we would think. It there's going to be a hitter because they're running out of people. Have to be. No one coming out yet. And if Shave is the replacement at shortstop, that means Kevin Kennedy's bench is gone for the night. It is going to be DeCenzo who's going to hit. Boy, this is an uncomfortable position for Kevin to be in. I mean, that's not to second guess the moves at all. I mean, he's got to make the moves at a point where he, he feels he's got a shot, and he does have one here, two runners on. The Senzo this year, who of course, will be hitting from the right side. He's hitting 238. He's been more productive. And, and actually, this statistic is pretty valid because he's 5 for 21, and he's had only one more hit left-handed in the 16 more at-bats. He has been more productive from the right side with 238, and now he'll see what he can do against Lilliquist. Senzo last year uh, hit a little better against right-handed pitching. So, and Doug carries with him to the plate a really long, bad streak here. Doug's only four for his last 34. There's the last non-pitcher, and he's loosening up. John Shea says so he's got to come in and play the infield. He would appear, and that pitch is in, and it is one ball and no strikes to Desenzo. Desenzo this year when being used as a pinch hitter has been productive. He's three for seven. And he's hit it hard, doesn't get the play, and a tag made coming through, and that retires the side. He did all you can ask, hit the ball on the button, but the Rangers get only one run in the inning. And they are still trailing as we go to the bottom of the seventh by a score of seven to four. Decade of Sports, 10 years of entertainment, HSE. Reggie Jefferson leads off in the bottom of the seventh with Glenn Allen Hill and Alvaro Espinosa to follow against Jeff Bronke. 
defensively we got a couple changes we'll give him in just a moment Jefferson has grounded out reached on an error and been hit by a pitch he takes a strike switching around the center fielder is Desenzo staying in the game the Rangers also have a new shortstop John Shave, which means nothing left but pitchers on the bench that's inside for a ball Reggie Jefferson he said hit by a pitch in the fourth inning he's a switch hitter and this is his power side Shea will get tested early and takes a hard pop and throws it across. And there is one out. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by your neighborhood 7 11. Oh, thank heaven for 7 11. Boy, Detroit just continues to roll along. Bill Gullickson pitches that beauty this afternoon. Minnesota, fueled by Knobloch and Puckett, bombs Oakland for 12 runs and gets away with a win. Uh, Baltimore and New York, the O's lead 1 0. Milwaukee behind Navarro leads Toronto and Jack Morris. Chicago behind Alex Fernandez leads Kansas City and Cone. And later on, that's going to be Randy Johnson against John Farrell, California at Seattle. Ooh, by the way, just noticed Pat Kelly's hit another homer. This is Wayne Kirby, pinch hitting. And he hits a foul ball. He's in for Glenn Allen Hill. Just as we gave you the scores, it popped up on our scoreboard that Pat Kelly is homered for the Yankees. They got one run last night, and it was a Pat Kelly homer. And they've got one run tonight, and it's a Pat Kelly homer. They're beating 338 with uh, just 71 at bats, no homers, and eight RBIs. Greg, this is a guy, remember when we were down in spring training, the rumors were all hot about the Rangers being interested in this guy? It's taken him eight years. Took him eight years to make his major league debut. That was in 1991. There's a fly ball to center field. Desenzo froze to see where it was coming and then went and caught it. One of the reasons the rumors were fueled about Kirby is that he was a favorite of Ranger manager Kevin Kennedy when Kevin managed him at Albuquerque. He really liked him. Real versatile player. And Kevin would have liked to have had Kirby over here. But as Greg told you, it looks a little late for that now, doesn't it, Greg? <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, a lot of the viewers on our network uh, tonight uh, watching in San Antonio remember him too because he played 87, 88, and 89 in San Antonio. So he's very popular in South Central Texas. There's a pop up of the bat of Espinosa. And again, Desenzo makes the play. And an easy inning for Bronchi. Almost the minimum number of pitches. We've played seven now. And we go to the eighth inning, and it'll be the Rangers down by a 7 to 4 score. Prescription medicines can have dangerous interactions with emergency room drugs. Medic Alert can prevent this. Call 1-800-ID-ALERT today. Butch Davis leads off of the eighth for the Rangers, and he takes the first pitch inside for a ball. Davis working against Derek Lilliquist. Came into the game in the fourth inning when Julio Franco pulled up lame trying to run out an infield potential infield hit. That ball is driven deep to left field, back to the track, to the wall, and it is up and over and out of here. Butch Davis with a long home run over the left field wall, and the Rangers close one run closer. It's seven to five on Davis's second homer. And he hit that one on the nose. Line driving out of here for Butch Davis. Lilliquist buries a fastball belt high right down the middle. And there's one of the picnickers about to go get that ball it looked like and there is Canseco now. He's grounded out twice. Been hit on the head by a fly ball and struck out. Greg, I don't I don't think I think that was the picnickers guard oh, yeah, that you saw the one man assigned to guard the picnickers to keep them from rioting a lot of these empty seats have guards here there's a foul ball in fact there's one on each side there's one on each side of the picnic area as a matter of fact guards and of course our friend that we saw up in the upper reaches was busy in the last half inning yeah, he's shooing people out of his area We're trying to spell things with the folded seats <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to tell you what they were trying to spell either and Seiko takes it inside. Two balls and a strike. Tell you what, with 80,000 seats and a lot of empty, you could spell a lot of things. You might be able to do the first chapter from Moby Dick. Big swing and a miss, and it's 2 2. Rangers have. 
eight hits tonight and three of them have been homers. But they're down on the score seven to five here in the top of the eight. Foul back. You know, Greg, not that I miss him, mind you. But the drummer's been awfully quiet tonight. John Adams, he's here with his drum. He's well, been awfully quiet. They've been ahead. See, look, he's reading a magazine. They're ahead. That's to rally the Indians. Drummers monthly. <laughs> oh, from one head to another. They went on the umpire's head. Foul ball. It is 2 2. Whiteside and Patterson limbering in the Ranger bullpen. There he is. Look at him. Those are his two protege drummers, by the way. Someday this will all be yours. Here's the 2 2. Laying off, and the count goes full. Now, remember, if uh, Canseco can get on, the tying run would come to the plate. Rodriguez on deck. Canseco looking for his first hit. He struck out on the first, and then is grounded out twice. He's on. Boy, good at bat for Jose. Paul off some good pitches, and now the Rangers can rid themselves of Lilliquist. This is not an Indian bullpen that's been very good. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines, offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. First, Southwest Airlines, one of their many locations, is, in fact, Cleveland. And there is going to be a pitching change. Mark, Mike Hargrove has already made the signal to the bullpen. This apparently will be Eric Plunk coming in. Now, Lilliquist, we told you, had an earned run average of 1.47. Plunk's earned run average is 2.61, so he's having a good year. But you must understand this. Nobody else in the Indian bullpen has an earned run average under 5.4. So this is the last line right here, Lilliquist and Plunk. There you see the Plunk numbers Norm was talking about. Very, very good as he will now warm up while he's warming up. Let us remind you that uh, you can join us at any Metroplex Valley's President's Health Club and receive a two week mini membership free. For more information call 1-800-WORKOUT. Checking out the Valley's notes now, Norm. Yeah, Dallas A. Jimmy Jones goes on the disabled list in Montreal. They recall pitcher Mark Gardiner to replace him. Toronto puts a Todd Stottlemyre on the disabled list with the pulled muscles and Woody Williams, a pitcher, comes up to replace him. Tonight, the Reds have called Gary Varsho back from the minor leagues, and uh, the Yankees have disabled uh, Danny Tartable for 15 days. He has a bruised kidney from colliding uh, with the Gerald Williams the other day. Eric Plunk, somehow saying that uh, if, in fact, Ricky Henderson is traded from Oakland, he'll probably come to Cleveland. Why? because he's got to go for Eric Plunk. They're always traded for each other. Eric uh, was traded to Oakland uh, with Stan Javier, Jay Howell, and Jose Rio, Tim Burtzis for Ricky Henderson and some others, and then went to New York with Greg Cattare, Louis Polonia for Ricky Henderson. Mm -hmm. Would the third time be the charm? I don't know. Well, the one thing that's never been a charm for Eric Plunk is pitching against the Texas Rangers. Plunk has had a good career in some spots, most notably in Oakland, but he has had horrible trouble with the Rangers. In his career, Plunk has pitched 54 innings against Texas and allowed 39 runs. Ouch. Well, there's a runner at first base that if he allows wouldn't be his, but the runner at the plate, if he allows, would be, and Rodriguez is the tying run. Yvonne doubled in the first, has flied out and grounded out since. There's nobody out. One run in on the Butch Davis homer and Canseco at first base. Rangers trailing by two, seven to five here in the top of the eighth here in Cleveland. Get a reminder, the Rangers road trip continues into Boston after a day off tomorrow. Our next telecast will be Wednesday from Minneapolis. And there's a high fly ball to left field. Albert Bell has a lot of room waiting for that one to come down. There's one out. And again, the Rangers jump on a first pitch from a reliever. 
Plunk, by the way, this year in 20 innings, is putting up Rob Dibble-like numbers. 20 innings, 29 strikeouts. Last season, nine and six in 58 games. Hey, Greg, that's a ridiculous rate. 29 strikeouts in 20 innings. Yeah, that's not been his forte. More strikeouts in innings pitched. Here's Palmero, who has a homer and a single. Also a stolen base. Foul ball. Jefferson makes a dive. Can't get to it. Couple of key plays in this game. One, a, a home run ball that uh, went off of Jose Canseco's head. And also another play involving him defensively in which uh, a ball that was hit by Baerga was ruled fair down the right field corner. He didn't catch it. Should have been caught. But it appeared on the replay that it is actually a foul ball. And Byerga ended up with an RBI and a triple. And that's two runs right there. The Rangers trail by two. And Seiko at first with the 0-1. There he goes. Pitches an off-speed pitch. The throw down not in. Oh, it is in time. Tackles on the body. The leg got in. But Canseco is thrown out. And here's where the Ranger aggressiveness cost themselves the chance for the man to bat with the tying run. Was he? Yeah. Got him on the hip. Yeah. Before the foot got to the bag. Good throw by Ortiz. And it was right on. The call was a good one. And that's a tough call because you're looking at two different spots. It's not all in one place. Pitch was a strike. 0-2 pitch now with two outs to Palmero. It's one ball and two strikes. And Seiko really got a... The pitch was up, so it was easy for the catcher to get out of the crouch and throw, but it was not a fastball, so that it wasn't a hard pitch. Might have been a change, but it was... Uh, throw was a good one. Rangers now one for two in steals in this game. That's where the Rangers' uh, aggressiveness under Kevin Kennedy will at times be questioned because the Rangers had the tying run at the plate with a guy who's already hit a home run in this game Palmero. Now the Rangers to get the tying run at the plate must get someone back on base. Well that's a play you can you can make in the eighth inning but you obviously don't do it in the ninth. That's a foul ball and and but barring a double play it does cost Dean Palmer a chance to bat as the tying run. Now he could still again if Palmero gets on but if Palmero were to get on Palmer would have represented the lead run in that situation. 2 2 pitch right down the gut that retires the side and the Rangers get one run on the homer by Butch Davis close within two but still trail they'll have one more crack of the night coming up will be Ortiz the top of the Cleveland Indians order they lead by two. of entertainment HSE not wasting any time on the first pitch Junior Ortiz slaps it back to Bronke on the mound who tosses him out one out here in the eighth Thomas Howard will be up there you see the score Rangers down by two and an early lead Kenny Rogers went four and two thirds gave up nine hits and seven earned runs well and the question now becomes what will the Rangers do with the starting rotation with the day off tomorrow they have the right to skip Rogers turn in the rotation next time round. There's a bouncing ball well and that would seem uh, judging by how he's pitched a pretty wise decision because they could also maybe get him back on track with a relief appearance. Well now realize they're off again next Thursday so they could skip his turn again next Thursday. And then hopefully by the 8th of June, Lefferts or Ryan might be ready to re-enter the rotation. You could go that way with it. No balls, two strikes. And that's three mm. strikes. And that is Howard striking out for the second out of the inning. Time now for the Dallas Morning News Sports Day front page news. Rangers head into trouble. Yeah, you could say that again. This is the at bat by Carlos Martinez in the fourth inning leading off the inning in which they scored three runs and 
took the lead and this was the way it started Jose Canseco back to the track reaching up and off his head over the wall for a home run catch all the action in sports day every day only in the Dallas Morning News hurry Greg the innings over it was quick one two three Felix Vermeen bounces out we go to the ninth Rangers have one last chance they will have coming up Palmer Strange and Rita's trailing by two. Dean Palmer leads off the Ranger ninth. They need two to tie. Palmer takes the first one up. Dean has struck out twice and popped up. By the way, Mark Portugal has left the game in the fourth inning tonight for the Astros with a muscle pull. Is that what the note said? Strained right groin, which would be a pull. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. Palmer has struck out 47 times this year, and he and Canseco are now in a dead heat. The dubious distinction of leading the team in that category, each with 47. Greg, last year, Eric Plunk had one of the hardest things happen to a pitcher. Those are plastic lenses he wears, and thank heavens they are. He had a ball hit right back into his face by Pedro Munoz of Minnesota. Yeah, three and one. He's one pitch away from putting the tying run at the plate. Plunk deflected the ball with the thumb of his glove and it hit him right in the plastic lenses but they didn't shatter. And Plunk came out of it with little more than a welt under his eye. Full count. He went ripping for the three one pitch. Well I got some activity again. This is Wirtz and Young. We saw Young before. Cleveland's planning on going whole staff if they need it here. They've used four. And if they can win this one, they would take the series two games out of three. High pop right side, short right field. Jefferson by Erga, and finally the catch is made in right field by the Indians. And let's take a look at our Sherwin Williams play of the game. And yeah, it's that play. It just won't be forgotten, will it? Right off the noggin. He just lost it. It looks like he lost it perhaps when he pushed the glove up and they tried to find it. Where is it? And Jeff Holtz or uh, David Hull says it's over here. In a few minutes no. seconds later he kind of laughed about you it. You can't be serious. It went where? <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's Doug Strange now. By the way you said Greg about the Indians using everything they had the Indians it is late May and they've already used 16 different pitchers and 10 different starters on this team. It was not a deep team in pitching to begin with and then with the tragedy that killed Cruz and Olin and hurt Bob Ojeda badly this club's pitching was left in a shambles and you can see there's not many guys left sitting down in the bullpen right now. Strange takes it in. And Greg, you know, remember a year or two ago when the Rangers had that blade of injuries in their farm system? The Indians, including their major league roster, now have 17 pitchers on disabled lists in their system. 17. Blown past Doug, and it's two balls and two strikes. That's mind-boggling when you think about it. In one team system now, we're only talking about a major league team and four or sometimes five minor league teams, 17 disabled pitchers. Two balls, two strikes. Yes. Tear ball. Strange is going to be able to go into second base with an extra base hit as the ball rattles around in the bullpen. And Strange has his second hit of the ball game, and now that puts the tying run at the plate. Gary Reedus. Reedus has a hit a walk and a fly out his hit was an infield hit back in the seventh got an RBI off of it. Strange is doubled right down the line Jefferson says I hope it's foul but it wasn't. Doug Strange again swinging the bat well as the Indians bullpen pitcher <laughs> didn't quite know what to do. And now Reedus with power has a chance to not this one he is to be followed by John Shave. 
And then Doug Desenzo, <laughs> there will be no pinch hitters. No. There aren't any left. This is the best hope, obviously, of a home run in this game for the Rangers. And he took a big rip that came up empty. He narrowly missed, leading the Rangers to a big comeback in a home game on the last homestand when he, with the bases loaded, hit one down the left field line that was foul. And then he ended up striking out to end the ball game and in the inning. But he's a veteran, knows what he needs. That one's up, and it's one ball and one strike. Of course, Eric Plunk's a veteran, too, and he knows what he's got to not give up. Well, and if Plunk is at all familiar with the lineup he's going to face, he realizes this is a critical man for him. With Shave and Desenzo next. Good pitch. That was one of those pitches that had you said, that's what I'm looking for, <laughs> you can hit. But he jammed him with it because he'd been staying away, and it's one ball and two strikes. There's one out. Rangers down by two here in the ninth. Strange at second base. I don't think so. No swing. Ooh. The Rangers may have gotten away with one there. Oh. You'll get punched out by most umpires when the bat goes past the midway point and across home plate. Two balls and two strikes. In fact, that's uh, what happened game we're talking about before read us on a check swing struck out no check swing there just a big one that's two outs fastball hitter fastball pitcher and Plunk stuck it in a good spot it's a fastball out on the outer edge where even if Redis makes contact with that ball he's definitely not going to drive it out of the park Juan well, Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez is going to swing a bat. This is why the Rangers did not consider disabling Juan, because even if he can't play for seven to ten days, they felt he could swing a bat. Well, now let's talk about what happens if Gonzalez hits a home run. He obviously can't play well, in the field. Then we get a pitcher. Well. You'd probably have this is batting for the shortstop, so you'd probably have Kevin Kennedy switch strange to shortstop put Redis the left fielder in its second base and use a pitcher in left field now that's the choice right there that you're looking at it, or, or Kevin Brown who Kevin, Kevin Brown Brown's, could play defense Kevin Brown's probably the most athletic of the Ranger pitchers left yeah Rogers would have been all right in that role if he'd not already played well, he's telling him, don't let this guy beat you. We talked about Gonzalez. The Rangers, before the game, were talking about would he maybe go on the disabled list. They, they don't plan on it. Hinky is ready if they can tie the ball game. Can we quickly activate John Russell to the I'll, right there? I'll tell you the guy that probably, probably ought to use, though, if they got in that situation. And I have no idea how good he would be. But based on his value, and now they've used it, be robbed in. Yes because they're not using him as a pitcher in key situations. But let's see if the Rangers can get to that point. Gonzalez pinch hitting. Rips it for a base hit. Now he's going to limp to first base. Sh uh, Strange will come in and score. Now the Rangers really need to put in a pinch hitter here, and this will be your outfielder. You mean because a pinch, pinch, runner a pinch runner here, and it's going to be Brown. He had to limp to first base, but he came through with a base hit. And the Rangers are down by one. And the presence of Brown as a runner probably indicates that Brown would be the left fielder. If somehow the Rangers can tie or go ahead. It gets solid. <laughs> well, he came up ripping on the first pitch, and I'm sure the last thing he wanted to do was hit something he was going to run out. But he got himself as far as first base, and lift his way down the line and the Rangers now are within one run trailing by one and you don't suspect Kevin Brown would try to steal that would be the ultimate Kennedy Kennedyism wouldn't it yep Senzo takes a pitch low for the ball the Senzo came into the game in the seventh and ended the inning bouncing into a fielder's choice
Well, Gonzalez, though injured, picks up his 29th run bat at end of the year. Seven to six. Foul ball upper deck. Indians by one. Rangers had a 3 nothing lead, couldn't hold it. The Indians have had two three-run innings in the fourth and in the sixth. The Rangers have scored one run now in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, but still trail by one. Three Ranger homers, Julio Franco, Palmero, and Butch Davis. Davis into the game for Franco. Kevin Brown running at first base, pinch runner, pitches up, and it is now two balls and a strike. Director Dave Burchett had a good note. Imagine somebody just tuning in right now. They're saying, what? How Kevin Brown's running at first base? How'd he get on base? What? Doug DeCenzo's and Butch Davis is on deck? <laughs> what? Juan Gonzalez is in and out? There is a lot that's happened in this game. And that should do it. Bell in left field comes in, makes the catch, and that retires the side. So the Rangers get one each in the last three innings, but fall a run short. And that home run and a couple of other misplays were the difference in the ball game tonight. The Rangers losing it by a final score of seven to six. We'll be back to recap in just a moment. It's Ten years of entertainment. HSE. Texas Rangers baseball on home sports entertainment is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade satisfies your thirst and puts back what you need. Gatorade for that deep down body thirst. By your local Sherwin-Williams paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams, a participating sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. And by Southwest Airlines, offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. The Indians win the rubber game of the series, seven to six, taking two out of three from the Rangers, seven runs. 10 hits, no errors. The Indians left seven. The Rangers had six runs, 10 hits, one error. They left four. Mesa gets the victory. He went five innings and picked up his fifth win. He's five and three. Rogers, the loser, three and four. Eric Plunk picking up his third save. Homer's in the game. Franco hit one, and Davis hit one for the Rangers. Also, Palmero hit one for the Rangers. And uh, Carlos Martinez hit one for Cleveland. Those are the long balls in the ballgame. Texas now 24 and 21 in the West. Cleveland. 19 and 29 overall here at Cleveland Stadium. Our star of the game tonight was Felix Fermin, our Texaco star of the game. What he did to earn the honor was had three hits in five at bats, including a double and two singles, driving in three of the runs, including the run that put Cleveland ahead in the fourth inning. Felix Fermin, our Texaco star of the game. The Rangers uh, now will go on to Boston after an off day tomorrow. They'll open a series there over the weekend. Then in Minnesota on Monday, we'll have a game for you on uh, Wednesday night. The Rangers will wrapping up a three-game series with the Twins, and that'll be our next telecast. So we hope you'll be on hand for that one. The Rangers win one out of three here in Cleveland. Again, join us again next Wednesday night. The Rangers wrapping up a three-game series with the Twins, and we'll have that one for you on Home Sports Entertainment. The senior producer for Home Sports Entertainment is Robert Steinfeld. Tonight's Texas Ranger baseball game was produced by Jim Feldman and directed by Dave Burchett. Remote facilities provided by Northwest Mobile. Our technical director, Jeff Poland, and our engineer in charge, Mel Schultz. Stay tuned. The Texas Ranger postgame show, a look at all the scores, is coming up next. This is the Rangers postgame report. 
a recap of today's game with stats, highlights, and scores from around the leagues. Today's show is being brought to you by Gatorade. Gatorade Thirst Quencher satisfies your thirst and puts back what you need. Gatorade for that deep down body thirst. Any guests who appear on a Texas Ranger postgame show receive an AM FM stereo cassette player from RCA. Welcome back to the booth here at uh, Cleveland Stadium. Greg Lucas here along with Norm Hitzkiss. This was a game the Rangers probably are going to say should have won with a 3 0 lead early. And then a couple of defensive misplays, really the story, too, allowing some extra runs. Uh, neither one of the misplays are charged as errors, but we talked about it again. Plays unmade. We talked about that a lot last year. And Canseco had a couple of them. Yeah, the ball that uh, bounced off his head over the fence cost the Rangers one. And there's a ball that Bayerga hit to the corner that winds up hitting on the ground, literally. And, and Jose, though each would have been very, very fine catches, they were balls that hit short of the wall and, and probably could have been played. And it's those plays that come back to haunt you a little bit. But what may haunt the Rangers out of this game is the Franco injury. Franco hurt uh, uh, Gonzalez, as you could see, when he pinch hit in the ninth. He's uh, out for a while. Uh, Julio Franco, after homering his first time up, pulled up lame the second time. It was a pulled quadriceps muscle. And apparently they're concerned that it's uh, it's going to be serious and keep him out for quite a while. They're going to keep him here in Cleveland. He will not travel with the club to Boston. They're going to have the MRI done immediately tomorrow morning for Julio Franco. That seems to indicate the belief that it's a fairly serious situation and might wind up with Franco on the DL. So the Rangers very banged up with uh, several starters of out. And of course, Manny Lee continues to be out. Franco is going to be out for a while. Gonzalez is going to be out for a while. And, uh, and then... Uh, Ripken is out, although he's on his way back, uh, but he's out. Well, you throw in Ryan and Lefferts, which is two-fifths of the starting rotation at the beginning of the year, and this club is doing a good job of hanging on when you look at the standings, given the kind of day-to-day, moment-to-moment juggling that Kevin Kennedy's having to do. Yeah, they really are. I think that's what thing fans have to remember. Oh, you can be disappointed here and there, but they're hanging on with not really the team that they had hoped to be playing with. Well, you hate to say it, but our open tonight to the telecast was almost prophetic. We said in the open that years like this, sometimes the gods of baseball simply never let up with, on you injury-wise. And now since the 1st of March, in the three months since Kennedy opened camp, he's had the 12 player, the nine players he wants to put on the field of play available, only 12 days in that three months. And with Franco down, Gonzalez down, you got a feeling it'll be sometime in June before he has a chance at that situation again. Yeah, that's the way it looks. There was a couple of plays, though, that we want to talk about. One is our Long John Silver's catch of the game. This came early in the game. Kenny Rogers was having a lot of trouble in the uh, first inning. Line drives, line drives, line drives. He had two on and two out, and this ball was lined to the right center gap. Canseco coming over and made an outstanding catch there. That saved a couple of runs. And that is our Long John Silver's catch of the game. Unfortunately, the Rangers unable to move off of that point and move on to a victory. You stay with us. We'll take a break, and we'll be back uh, to recap all the scores in just a moment. 